Hello and welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Platinum Night and we're excited that you're joining us. I'm Mike Provenzale, the production manager here at Heritage. On my right, the rolliest, poliest, giddiest, laughingest, <laughs> guffawingest guy in the hobby, Mr. Tony Geezy. Tony, how are you doing? Right. Great! I've been looking forward to this for Months. Months, all months. right. Months, yes. He gets excited moment to moment, so yes. months, he's really built something up. And oh, There's some beef jerky in here. Don't worry, we got is, plenty of beef have jerky. That? That's going to come later. We got on the far we got right the table. Ah, okay. Yeah. The far right here, a new face to Heritage, newish now, but Mr. Dan Immler, our new VP. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, our uh, overly handsome here. VP. <laughs> oh, thank yeah. you. Uh, seriously. But he's also very talented. I'm sure a lot of you out there know him. Uh, we're going to tap into that knowledge here in a moment. But... Ladies and gentlemen, it's Platinum Night. We've got the Platinum Night auction. Session one closing tonight. Session two will close tomorrow night. It's all via extended bid. Extended bid begins at 10 p.m. Central tonight. You have to have a bid in before extended bidding begins to participate in extended bidding. It's that simple, gentlemen. You break uh, it down so well, man. I know. Yeah. I've done you it make a few it so times. easy that's for everyone all, to understand. It's all experience right there. And it's an exciting time for us. We have some of the most iconic and legendary items, cards, collectibles in this auction. And they're going to find a new home tonight. And we're going to have all our experts on. We're going to talk about them, what we like about them, what's interesting about them, what's significant about them. And, uh, of course, if you're watching us on Facebook, you can comment. We'd love to get some questions from you. Uh, any items you want to see or hear us talk about, let us know. Uh, or just if you have questions for Tony. Everybody always wants to know about Tony's personal life. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> It's a fantastic night. We're going to take you through up to extended bidding and past, let you know what's rising up the charts. That's why Tony has his computer out. He's not watching the Bucks game on his computer. He's watching that on his phone, which is nice. I tried to get it on my right phone. in front of it. It's not working. Uh, uh, technical you can watch difficulties. The fight. Is that working? We, we are going to watch the fight tonight. after. Yeah. Yes, yes, right. absolutely. So, you know, Platinum Night's a classy event. Thanks for dressing up, Tony. Anytime. Um, <laughs> You know, and as everybody knows, my number one goal is to be the poet laureate of the hobby. You did a fine job of it too. Yeah, I'm You're getting doing there. A very, I'm very getting good a little recognition, of and of course, for Platinum Night, I had to uh, write something. Uh, Tony, I know you're not Danny, you Walt Whitman fan. I'm one of the biggest Walt Whitman fans oh, in the country. You're gonna love yeah. this. Oh, oh. So excited! <laughs> Don't let him down. Do not let him I down. Know, a Mike. lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. I mean, he, technically, he's my boss. So here we go. <clears throat> this is entitled. Oh, auction, our auction. Hmm. Now, this isn't the one that you did before. This is brand new. Some people might have gotten a preview of this. Oh, okay, okay. This is really that. good. Uh, okay. You know, you got to test out your material yes. beforehand. I was once told, but now it's the big show. So here we go. Don't screw up. <laughs> uh oh. Oh, auction, our auction. The platinum catalog is done. Some pages packed with cards, many boasting, one of one. The collectibles, just delectable, varied and wondrously rare, while follow your eyes from page to page, inspired to just stare. But oh Ruth and Gehrig and Jordan, high value, hardy and ripe for investment, obscure to Hall of Famers, signatures to gamers, even breaths from the pine tar incident. Oh auction, our auction, log on and cast your bids. Raise up the current level, level on your favorite cards and sigs. For you, an early Garrick bat. For you, Mantle 61 flannel. For you, Red Favors Gamer from the famed Black Sox scandal. Here auction, all platinum. A high-grade Cobb Cracker Jack. It is a dream for some to own. A 1938 Lou Gehrig contract. Our auction does not quit. It goes on via extended bid. Time to get Super Bowl rings or an all-star gamer from the kid. A record price for a LeBron rookie once it all goes down. The finest Shoeless Joe Sig tonight will be won. Exhaust your stores and win your faves. Don't even spare a cent. And know you will be satisfied you bought from Heritage. Ladies and gentlemen, that's wow. Wow. what a start. Wow. Thank you. Thank you did very you just much. rhyme investment with incident? I did. <laughs> uh, that's impressive. If anybody watched the NBA All Star game and saw Common do the introductions, I was inspired by him. Yeah. 
finagle the words I a little got bit that there. Vibe, yeah. That common vibe. Yeah. yeah uh, we're good. close friends. I knew him back when he was common sense. No big deal. <laughs> oh my God. But. Nice. <laughs> so we want to hear from you guys. Let us know with your questions. We're going to be here all night. We hope you're watching. You can watch on Facebook. You can watch on our homepage. And you can watch on the recent bid screen. So you can see the bids coming in, which Tony's monitoring right now. Red Faber, 90,000 right now. 90, yeah. From the 1919. Look series. at that play ball, DiMaggio. It was at 410, wasn't it? Yeah. See, that's, that's what it's all about. That, we that just went watching. quite a bit in the last. As soon as this went live, did you see that screen? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do one rhyme about Red Faber, and then bam. And it just, it, it just. Yeah. Now we need that LeBron rookie to take another hit. Mm. Yes. There we go. So, let's get started. Without further ado, uh, Dan, you're the new man here. Mm -hmm. What do you want to talk about? Uh, we're going to do some bats. Yeah. Yeah. So, I like uh, bats. I'm a bat guy. Laid Not just any us. bats so, either. Yeah, no, we got some good ones <laughs> it's here. Really nice. Um, ones. You know, I mean, memorabilia. It's all about kind of getting as close to the game as you can. And you know, for me, like the bats, like the ultimate tool of the trade. It's the money maker, right? Absolutely. That's that's. It's the weapon in their hands. Absolutely. And they it, show sh so much personality. Bats do too. 100%. With with the pine tar and all the other. Unlike our other VPs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So no, exactly. Uh, you know, like there's so many character elements to the bat to a bat, and bats are something that you know are kind of sacred to to players, and they every all players have different habits and treat their bats differently, and so it's you know it's really kind of like you know uh, an extension of 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 the player. Intensely and, personal. Yeah, it's a very, very personal. personal. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, starting off with. Doing bats, so we might as well start off with one of one of, if not the greatest hitter ever, um, Ty Cobb. That's right. Three sixty six lifetime average. Not bad. Um, probably something that's going to stand the test of time. <laughs> I would you say. think? But um, this one, so so this one is not just any Cobb gamer. This one to me is probably top two or three Cobb bats in the world. I remember the day this came into our office. Yeah. Red letter day. Really? Yeah. It, it's just outrageous. So. You know, for when you talk about like like player traits, there's with with Cobb, there's like certain absolute traits that if you're gonna own a Cobb bat, you there's you know you gotta check certain boxes. What are you looking for? Yeah, and this one you know this one checks them all. So starting you know with the with the the handle tape, he was famous for using handle tape, and we've got really a great representation of the of the spiral tape residue on the handle here. Um, this is a this is a fairly early Cobb bat. This is a J.F. Hillerich and Son. It's 1910 to 1915 period. Um, right in the heart of the dead ball era. Yeah, and and what's really just incredible is if you look up, you know, Cobb's baseballreference.com, and you look at that 1910 to 15 period, he was like just otherworldly. I mean, he was, you know just on a completely on another level that was that was those five years were part of the run of nine consecutive batting titles he hit That's over incredible. 400 twice during that span um his his one mvp season 1911 falls within that span so i mean you've got like this is this is from absolutely like the apex of his dominance um so and this is within his hands during that run yeah absolutely and so you know, from there, um, you know, just the, the condition is spectacular. You know, another hallmark you just you, you look for with a cob is um, the spike marks on the end of the barrel. Um, and, and he had sharp, very sharp spikes. Yeah, he yeah. didn't just use them on his opponents. <laughs> also oh. on the back. So, you know, this one's got the, it's got the cleat marks. It's got the handle tape residue. Um, you know, the, the uh, he was famous for kind of treating the handle with like Tibet with tobacco juice and you can kind of see the 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 coloration from that here on the handle um another actually interesting element of this one is you'll see you'll notice that the cob uh barrel stamping is is close to the to the center brand right next to um it. which you know obviously is 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 not typical but um what a lot of people well a lot of our viewers may know but in, uh, not common knowledge, but they actually used decal bats for a period of time, and and this actually most likely had a decal on it at the at the end of the barrel. Um, so oh, the the, the okay. placement of the of the barrel branding, uh, you know, I, I think was a, 
um, to allow for room for the uh, for the decal on it. So um, just all in all, it's that's just, the knowledge we brought him in. For yeah, there, right there. There you go. Um, you got the the lay great lathe mark on the end. Um, just it's the total package. But you know, for me, it's like that that period when you know th this this was absolutely from the ideal you know period of cop's career where he just was like just tearing the league apart so if you want to combat that's the area yep. you want and this you got is, it right what's here the estimate tonight. on that this Dan? is this is the one uh, i think it's around three 350 is it okay yeah so and it's worth every bit of that so um He's bringing so, the heat right off the bat. Yeah, <laughs> coming, out, coming out swinging. Yeah, no Cobb would be no proud of that. Yes. Cobb would be proud of yeah. that. Um, so, again, going, you know, uh, along the lines of the greatest hitters of all time, we got a killer uh, Ted Williams bat here. And this one, you know, like the Cobb, you know, really just kind of checks every box for, for a Ted Williams bat. I love the pine tar buildup. Yeah, tons of pine I mean, tar. One and 1A for greatest hitters right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The oh, that's, they're, they're always going to be in the conversation for sure. Um, but, you know, going back to how, like, players, you know, treat their bats and, the you know, kind of that personal connection, Williams, no, you know, nobody m was more connected to their bats than, than, than Williams, and he's famous for being – just super particular you know he was you know studied hitting like a science right. and that detail you know, guy absolutely and you know he would you know he would fly down to louisville and go to the factory and there's a famous story that he would actually go and like tip the the guys on the lathe to to use the most choice <laughs> lumber for his bats so i mean people were doing that he's, he's not, going to the factory. not a lot yeah <laughs> he's ahead of his time yeah you know he he you know it's been said that he kept his bats like in a humidor and um you know he had his um the famous red sox uh clubhouse man johnny orlando you know he was kind of appointed to oversee ted's bats and you make know make sure nobody's messing with absolutely him. yeah right. so he t he Williams was very connected to his bats, and that this is like a great example here. This is a 1955 All Star bat. It's got the 1955 All Star uh, stamping on the barrel, and unlike most All Star bat All Star bats you see, this one's absolutely pounded because right. a lot of times, you know, if if they use their their All Star bat in the game, um, you know, that was the that was kind of the extent of the usage, and so oftentimes you see All Star bats with with light use, but this is one that clearly he carried over throughout the rest of the season. Maybe and, something and maybe he liked even, about it. Maybe he wanted even to hold on to it. Yeah. So this is uh, this is just a it's just a monster Williams bat. Um, so and it's yeah piece. again with the yeah. with you know the you got the pine tar ball marks. It's just pounded. You know you got the grain separation here from ball contact. It's got it all. It's a killer. Great stuff right there. Yep. We're gonna keep moving right along. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna break one out here. I'm gonna get on get in on this. It's air. not gonna be as good as those. Or oh, who knows? Don't <laughs> show, <laughs> don't show me up. Come on. Yeah, yeah come on. Yeah. You saved the. You, this oh, is yeah. his first time here. As, as, as Rob Rosen will tell here. you, this show is all about me. <laughs> yeah, conforming to my <laughs> ego. So, uh, I remember the day this one came in too. This is a 1922 to 23 Lou Gehrig game. Bat PSA 10. And Tony, hold that, Tony. I'll be the model. Feel the magic. Feel yeah, the magic. Careful. It's right. one of the two earliest Garrick bats known. And anything Garrick, of course, is wildly popular among collectors. And then, of course, when you can say earliest, that's checking all the boxes. Uh, he had a brief late season debut with the 23 cha uh, champion Yankees. And on September 27th, he hit the first of his 493 home runs. Knocked in Ruth for the first of many, of course. many times. And then 18 days later, he signed his deal with H&B uh, when he'd start having the facsimile signature. You can see on there, it's got it's the got block signed. letter signature on there, um, which oh, yeah. establishes, establishes it as a pre-endorsement bat for him right there. So that puts it in his hands with Columbia, the Senators, the Yankees, or possibly all three. So yeah. we're talking super early Gehrig right here. Um, the factory side writing reads 40 ounces, Lou Gehrig, 4, 22, 25, which is just a month short of the start of his consecutive game streak. Wow. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, 
So the earliest entry in HMB's factory ordering for him dates to April 8, 1925, calling for 35 and a half inch old Hornsby model weighing 39 to 40 ounces. 19 caliper readings. This matches up. Wow, Mike, you really right? uh, yeah. studied. This is one of my favorites. This yeah. is one of I my favorites. I thought I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> so this matches that perfectly. Tony did the 19 caliper readings himself. I did. He's very exacting, <laughs> just like Ted Williams. With the caliper you keep in your desk drawer. <laughs> right. yeah. And that's all he has in his desk That's drawer, it. Just the caliper and uh, some pixie sticks, probably, or something mm -hmm. like that. But, What's uh, it? So this was mailed back? I mean, is that from when it was mailed then? Yeah, it's remnants of the oh, shipping Oh, that's label. really yeah. cool. And it's and got it's incredible like... usage on it. Uh, John Tobby, the bad authenticator, said it's definitely Yankees usage in there. Mm -hmm. And so that is just an outstanding piece. Somebody's going to own it tonight. Yeah. Incidentally, this is how we ship our bats, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. Slap the just label throw it in. Slap the label on it. Just throw it in the mail. Out they go. Uh, it's a historic war club right it here. It is. Certainly. Uh, Tony Etchbrook okay. took it away from me right there. Tony, what do you got? Starting off, we've got a Joe DiMaggio all-star bat from 1951, his final year. But he also used it in the World Series, so it's also one of his last bats given to a clubhouse guy from the Yankees after after the season. Um, he, one of the clubhouse workers was promised a bat, and when so Dimaggio forget, yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. when Dimaggio was cleaning out his locker, the guy went up to him and asked him about the bat that he yeah. was promised, and this is he got lucky. He got a he got the nicest one probably. Um, all-Star Game and World Series. He's got, it's, I believe it's, it is graded a ten, hundred thousand dollar estimate. Excellent use on it. Um, a lot of dead wood just from re repeated contact. Uh, this has got all the... A little more contact. <laughs> yeah, it's going <laughs> to... Contact with my face. I'm going to knock out Mike's it's my teeth my here. my money maker I'm right sorry, here. I'll, I'll, I'll be more <laughs> careful in the future. But uh, just one of the nicest, um, you know, Final career year bats from DiMaggio, and uh, especially with the All Star and the World Series attribution to it. And like we talked about, collectors love things the earliest at the beginning, and then the yes. bookend also the last. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And then this, this, as I recall, with this bat, there's the bat boy who got it literally wrote a book about it called yes. The Promise. Right. Mm -hmm. Joe Carrieri was his name. So you know, it's it's. We, uh, do we include right do we include a copy of the book with? The uh, they have to bag? they have to pay extra for that, don't they? Tony did a uh, audio book of it. Okay. <laughs> Send you the file on that. <laughs> My God, Tony book, uh, no, they don't want uh, that. Tony can read, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. And no, just that, proof of just it. bits and pieces. This is an absolutely insane Dimaggio. Yeah, and that, and that provenance literally doesn't get better than that. You gotta love that story where they're giving it out to the kid. You know, yeah. it's like Mean Joan Green right there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Dan, what do you got? Oh, um, yeah. I also Don't, so jumping short, ahead to short the, the modern, <laughs> modern era, um, and you want to talk about a timely piece? Yes, so this all, is this is so very securely taped. So oh, I see. What we can do here. This is a little prank. Uh, right do I have a knife? <laughs> <laughs> that caliper. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Let's see. Oh, see there we go. Oh. Look at how many well, knives are just popping, <laughs> popping out from wow, behind hey. the scenes. It's making me a little nervous here. <laughs> Don't want to make any errors. Got some unpacking to do. <laughs> there we go. It's like Christmas morning oh, here. Ooh. There it is. Yeah. So jumping ahead, modern era. This is an incredible uh, Jeter bat. Wow, look at the use on that. Yeah, from 2011. And actually, one of the reasons I kind of zeroed in on this one um, is... Uh, you know, this one really kind of speaks to the application of like photo matching, which is, you know, obviously gaining a, a lot of traction in the marketplace. And so this one is like, oh, yep, yeah, here we go. <laughs> wow, like Magnus. The sign turners. <laughs> <laughs> right. So a staff um, of hundreds here helping yeah, us out. Yeah. So uh, this one's just, I mean, photo match, video match to the hilt. I think it covers a, like a 13-game span, including a two-homer game. Um, and uh, it's like, you know, just pounded. I mean, the, this, the, the ball yeah. marks everything else. And Jeter, Jeter was actually fairly consistent, you know, with his bats throughout his career. Um, you know, you got a lot of, you know, he, he 
kind of alternated between pine tar and moda stick, and there's a ton of it here on this bat. I love the leather. Yeah, uh, fr the from transfers. the baseball. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so that's yeah, these, really these cool. black bats show those show those uh, those uh, ball transfer marks really well. Occasionally, like once in a while, you'll get one where you can like. If it's you know just right, you can literally read the the you know, commissioner's stamp. Yeah, like, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, this one's got all a lot of nice scuff marks and um, just you know again, Jeter bats you know in and of themselves are not uncommon, but really special ones. That's um, the thing you want to find something and the that's photo match. Marked. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, this one um, you know is probably in the top. You know, five percent. So this and a good is, time to get it. He's going to go in the hall yep. later this summer, and yeah. you know, prices are going to go nuts after mm -hmm. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. So and why not have the best? Yeah, I mean, of course. Yep. That's why you come to Heritage. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's as good a, a good a Jeter as you'll see for sure. You take us back here, Tony. Your line is how far are you going back? And my answer is way back. <laughs> not as far back as the Gehrig, but. Uh, Saw this one and had to bring it out. This is a 1946 to 48 Mel Ott game used bat and signed Mel Ott bat. Possibly his last home run gamer. The potential mm -hmm. is here. Uh, six time NL home run leader, third member of the 500 home run club. The high leg kick. The high leg <laughs> kick. Uh, he had an unorthodox he style. He had a very unorthodox and, style. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, one reason he was so popular, he was kind of a small guy. Yeah, you know, yeah he and, was. He uh, was. Knocking them out of the park for the little guys out there. Um, and there's not a lot of his bats out there. No, there there's, is not. There's not a great and deal of his bats. This is the only one we've encountered that has his autograph on it mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's got a very valuable autograph too. Uh, this one's 8 out of 10, so very nice. And during that period, 46 to 48, he only hit one home run. So this could have been number 511 right here. And it's got great provenance. It's sourced from the personal collection of Charles Stoneham Chubb Feeney, mm -hmm. who's a direct descendant of the Giants team owners, George and, uh, or Charles and Horace. So great provenance. It's I love PSA the, 10. I love the back again. Yeah, the, the uh, mailing label. The mailing label right as well. Right there. Uh, faded beyond legibility, but uh, John Tobby characterizes the use as excellent. And you can see it is. It's just battered. He only hit one dinger with it, but uh, obviously he got put a lot of work into it right here. So yeah, beautiful piece. Right. This one should do about 150, we're saying. Yeah. All these lots tonight, they're going to go down. They're going to find a new owner. Tony, got one I've more. I've got bat. one more. Yeah. 19. Oh, this is 75. Yeah. I believe this is like right around 1975, toward the end of his career. 73 to 74. 73 to 74. Oh, right okay. Mm -hmm. Hank Aaron game used bat. I think his stuff is still underrated. I think they're, I think. Well, you're a Milwaukee homer. I am. He's so. right on that. Yes, he's right on that. You can hear it in your voice. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do think his bats are, are going to start going up in value at some point. Um, this one had a 10,000 estimate. It's at 13.5 right now, which is a really, really good number for that. Um, good pine tar and just really, really good use on the back. The back barrel, just again, repeated contact. Sorry. <laughs> I get excited. I'm sorry. Yeah. He's always um, excited. It's all right. 44 on the top four, and, the, and the knob? Uh, barrel yes. And yep. Knob. Yeah. Yep. Um, just a really That's nice, high-quality Aaron bat towards the end of his career. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's get it. Oh, we'll one. get it right there. There you go. <laughs> or, or should I do the, 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 the Bo Jackson? Okay. Um, Again, just a really, really high quality. This one's rated a nine and a half by John Tovey, and uh, you know this should be. It's at thirteen now, but this thing could get fifteen to twenty. And this it one's in really session good. two, which will close tomorrow, it, it, tomorrow night. night. Same thing, yeah. extended bidding. So great piece, and like you said, yeah. Aaron stuff. Uh, I think there's room for it to go there up. There is. I, there I really is. do. I think he's. I don't want to say underappreciated, but I, I think his bats should be worth a little more than what they are, and. We'll see if that happens. Tony speaks the truth, ladies. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, a great little primer right here on bats. Obviously, we've got some legendary ones. You can go to ha.com. If you're not already there watching us, take a look. We've got high-res images, detailed descriptions from some of the finest wordsmiths in the hobby. Uh, Tony and Jonathan, over Jonathan, here. <laughs> come on. We'll be talking yeah. to He's, Jonathan later. He is, yeah. But 
some very exciting stuff. Dan, thank you so much for joining us. I mean, We're happy to be a, you're, make you a part of the team. I've been a fan for so long. It finally happened. Often on this show, we uh, end each segment with a hypothetical, so we've got <laughs> one for you. Are you uh, familiar with the movie Freaky Friday? Yeah, somewhat. Yep. So uh, we've got three VPs. We're going to hear from two of them tonight, Dan and Derek. Third VP, uh, Rob Rosen, a lot of people know him. He worked very hard in this auction. But people that know him know 4 o'clock, he's going to Luby's for dinner. And then after he finishes the Jello, he's going right to bed. So mm -hmm. he's tucked in right now. But so Freaky Friday, hypothetical for you. For one month, you're going to transfer into the body of one of the other VPs. Who are you picking, Derek or Rob? Wow. Wow, I have to adopt That's one of those bodies? Yeah, you're, you're, you <laughs> are them for one month. Everybody thinks you are them. So a lot of pros, a lot of cons, well, a lot of cons, but you got to level those out. Wow. Which one is less? Wake me from this nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Um, boy, you know. It's real Sophie's choice. It I is know. tough. It is tough. I mean, and now, but I'm going to have to, you know, I'm going to have to follow it up with why, and that's where I guess <laughs> really tough. So I might have to get back to you on that All one. right, absolutely. Yeah. That'll be the next show. You can message us on Facebook during the show I to will. let us know. I will. And uh, thank you so much for joining us, Dan Imler, ladies and gentlemen. Well, thank you. Now, as you may or may not know, Heritage has 40-plus departments. Tony, can you rattle them all off for me? No. Okay. Yeah, you can see a can list on our website and take a look at some of the featured items we've got in those, those departments. And when we talk back, come back, we're going to talk about some vintage cards. Hello, I'm Pete Howard. This glove has gone through war with me. It's been through rain, snow, sleet, and it's been repaired so many times. And um, I didn't allow anyone to put their, their hands in my glove, anyone. I'm Devon White, three-time World Series champion, three-time All-Star, seven-time Gold Glove winner. I want to talk about the catch. You know, um, we have Guzman on the mound. Um, Justice hitting. I usually play Justice to pull the ball, and hey, it happened that he, you know, he tricked everyone. He went to the left center field a little bit, 
and balled in the ballpark. I, I was that beast to say, if the ball is in the ballpark, I'm going to catch it. And you know, that time, that place, everything was in line. And hey, when I caught that ball, I hit the fence at the same time. I wasn't worrying about it because with this right here, anything that touches it is going to stay. I have half of my my hands that's in my glove. I never stick it all the way in. Um, all the fingers are in. I don't put two fingers in one or anything. I love the fast back because it, it feels good on the back of my hand. Um, I like the H web. But like I said, this glove has probably been repaired like you know two or three times, and you know it still to this day can go out there and you know catch a line drive right at you without you know um, breaking. But um, this is my glove. This is my weapon, and you know I, I feel the person that gets this glove is gonna be is a lot of history behind it. I'm talking about my first gold glove winner. When I won it and they announced it, it was like, oh, well, great, you know, I amount these guys, but it really hit me when they gave it to me opening day in Anaheim Stadium. And, you know, um, it, it was incredible. It was incredible. It was just like, oh, okay, wait a minute. I got to go out there in front of, you know, all these people, which I play, you know, I, in front of them every day, but just to be, singled out and put out there and say, Devon White, you know, gold glove winner. It's just like, okay. And then when I want it now, just like, I'm not giving it to anyone. And that means, you know, seven came after that, but it was just like, if I didn't win, it was a disappointment. So, um, you know, having it out there now for the public to see or to, you know, bid on it, it's, it's, it's something that's, like you say, it's very rare. The Large World Series trophies wasn't um, purchased by everyone. It's something that um, um, you as a ball player, if you wanted it, you know, a trophy, you know, to put in your trophy case, you know, you had to go out and, and get it from Major League Baseball. And at that time, you know, all the players were eligible to do that. But with the team that we have, I don't think um, a lot of my teammates did. You know, especially the back-to-back -back, um, in the 92 and 93, you know, like I said, the back-to-back, -back, there was maybe 10 returning players. And if so, you know, the Violin White World Series trophies would be, you know, one of 10, if that, if anyone got it. As far as, far as the smaller ones is concerned, um, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you how many guys um, uh, bought them, but going forward, you know, those World Series are very rare um, for, for players to just get them. It's very rare to, to see them out there if you see any at all. Talking to you about the, the, the Florida Marlins um, after becoming a free agent, it wasn't the same as Toronto Blue Jays, but it was incredible just just, just being there with, you know, the guy, the, the Gary Sheffield, the Moise Alou, and, you know, the other guys that we, we brought into the mix at the end of the year. It was it was it was a pleasure playing there, and you know I will be you know showing off that ring with this Devon White you know collection that you know that's one of the rings that I think you can wear it, and it's not too small, it's not too big, and I, I, I think it's the perfect size. I think one of my favorite things that I'm letting go that's going up to auction, you know, one of the favorite is this my glove, and of course you know the two World Series big trophies, and I just want to give the fans, the auctioneer, the people that are, are buying these things, the opportunity to, you know, enjoy the stuff that I have. Toronto and Canada is where I hit my stride as a ball player. Those back-to-back -back Blue Jays championship teams were incredible to play on. And the fans in Toronto and across Canada was a pleasure to play for. As a thanks to you, I am donating a portion of the proceeds from the Devon White Collection to the Canadian Cancer Society. Cancer has personally affected my family and the loved ones of so many of my Canadian friends. This glove has gone through war with me. Trovins are, you're so funny. <laughs> Welcome back. That was the video for our Devon White collection. Tony, you know a lot about I that. went there, and I actually, Taylor went with me. And, uh, Who's Taylor? Our great video man. Never met him. Oh, did a fantastic job. Not, I'm not, I'm not saying it because he's here, but he did a fantastic job. He's here? 
he I is. Know who this guy is. The glove thing. We'll we'll get into the We're glove get later. Into his yeah. Collection later. Yeah. Uh, some great stuff. But right now, we've got some very sad news. Uh, Derek Grady is not going to be able to join us tonight. So we're done as far as VPs. Um, the show has sick. taken a very very big hit. He's out sick. A lot of people, you know, play through injuries and sickness. Oh, oh. But uh, wow, Derek, not that kind of guy. I guess not that kind of guy. I will but, say uh, this about him. That man works a ton. He does. He works. He does. I mean, he's at shows. He's visiting clients. He's grading cards. I mean, he that guy. And he'll be the first one to tell you all that. He will, yes. Yeah, <laughs> Ad nauseum. Wow. Say. Ad nauseum. But he's one of the greatest card minds in the hobby. I'm sure a lot of you know him. Uh, thoughts and prayers with yes, him right yes, now. I'm yes. sure he's watching. Um, hopefully he's not too incapacitated. No. But uh, he probably had too many Monte Cristos today, perhaps. <laughs> we need uh, to get him well. We, we need do. to get him well. We do. But uh, so we're going to talk about some vintage cards, me and Tony. And boy, we've got some iconic ones yes, in this yes. auction right now. And we're going to start with this one, which is a uh, T206 Cobb green background. And it is autographed. The market is up on that stuff so much right yes. now. Yes, and autograph cards. It is, absolutely. And this is a bragging rights. There's a lot of T206 Cobbs out there, but this is the one you can say, well, I've got the one that's signed. Exactly, and yes. Boom, here it is right here. Uh, should do about 80000 And that's lot number two in the auction, if you're looking. Tony, you got a Cobb over there. Let's I've got a Cobb, and I've got a great story about this card. So, Derek Grady, who we... So sit down, children. Yeah, story everybody... Get some hot chocolate, some popcorn. Is that you know. possible? Maybe that guy Taylor, whoever he is, who you're talking about, uh, grab some uh, for us. I want the beef jerky. <laughs> it's a Mountain Dew. That, that would hit the spot. So anyways, I'm at a consigner's house. I'm, I'm there for the memorabilia. Derek flies in for the cards. So I, I get there a day early, and it is, it's in Michigan. It's freezing cold out, first of all. So I get there, and I look at, at the memorabilia, which is going to be sold over the next year through our through Heritage, a lot of really good Tigers, you know, flannels, uniforms, that kind of stuff, a lot of autographs. Derek gets there, and he's kind of thumbing through some of the cards, and he said, he pulls his card out. And Derek, his eyes get so big, and he's kind of freaking out. He goes, you never told me you had this. And he, he goes, I didn't even know I had it. This is the Ty Cobb bat off shoulder. And he said, this is worth like 200000 $200, plus. The guy takes a step back. You can see the tears welling up in his eyes. Wow. He had no idea on the value of it. Yeah, it's a and PSA 9. It's a PSA 9. Was it one of three, I believe? None I, I higher. Yeah, with none higher. Um, I mean, this was bought. This must have been bought maybe 20, 25 years ago, is my guess. And uh, we got it re, re slabbed. So he's for, telling you guys about Alan Trammell single sign base. He's talking he about, I mean, he had, he had a lot of like Verlander and a lot of, just a lot of Tigers uniforms. And, and But he had no idea. And Derek was wow. so giddy and acting like a little kid the rest so of the time. You, it was. You are always giddy. Derek, not as often. So that's, but it that's just, a high point. But it just changed the whole mood of the consignment. Because we had no idea that this was a part of it, and uh, yeah, Derek was like a little kid. And uh, That's right one now, of those it's great a, moments. Uh, you know, we do. If you have a nice collection, we'll come out. We'll come out. Absolutely. Check it out and appraise it for you. And if you're interested in selling, of course, we can help you with that as well. 
Tony's one of the uh, many people in our department. A who lot does of that. traveling. It, I've never had it happen where something like this, where a guy had you know a two hundred thousand dollar card and he didn't even know it. But if you're out there and you have and you have a one quarter million dollar card and don't know it, please give us a call. <laughs> We'd love to come out there. So let's keep with Cobb. This is one of my favorite Cobb items. Boy, he's getting a lot action. of attention today, isn't he? He is right off the top. Wow. Uh, he's a polarizing figure. But he is. I like him a lot. I like him a lot. This is a 1910 to 11 T3 Turkey Red Thai Cobb. Boy, say that ten times, bro. I did in the warm up to this. Okay. As you heard. Okay. Yeah. Very um, good. Very good. Instead of doing the brown fox jumps over the wall, that this is what I. That's do. what you. Okay. T3 Turkey Red Thai. You're such Cobb. a pro. You're such SGC a pro. SGC Near Mint plus seven. Point five, and this is just beautiful. It's a piece of art, essentially. It is. I, li I like the oversized. Uh, many too. consider the turkey reds to be the most beautiful trading cards there are, and this is an example of that. And the thing I love about this one is the sharp contrast of you've got the idyllic sunset in the background, <laughs> and then just the fierce competitor glaring right at you in the front, and outstanding. <laughs> condition it stands alone atop the SGC population of 97 submissions and as you can see it's oversized which makes condition very difficult a lot harder than the small it was hard to store them I mean you, you couldn't you didn't have plastic sheets or anything like that back you know you know most people probably that. store them how you store your collection <laughs> just piled up in the closet mine is in the office is in my office <laughs> it's the most secure place you I, know. exactly and they're on mannequins and it's this place makes Fort Knox seem like your closet. So <laughs> that's one of the great things about working in Heritage. Uh, the two-year production run of these oversized commemoratives were available only through the mail. So making them far rarer. They were harder to get. People had to mail them in. Um, and 1911, boy, he had a heck of a season. He had a lot of great seasons. Uh, yeah, he did. But uh, he won his only MVP and led the league in average 419 that year, runs, hits, doubles, triples, RBIs, and even stolen bases. So He could do it all. Yeah, and he could even hit for power, too, if he wanted to. For that era, absolutely. Yeah, he, he really could, and um, that's kind of an underrated thing of him. So right here, you've got the finest example of the hobby's most beautiful trading card issue, and it features the era's greatest star. Outstanding piece, definitely worthy of Platinum Knight. This should do about 200000 as well. So it's lot six for those of you out there <laughs> looking. It's just unbelievable. A lot of bids coming in. Um, Pittsburgh Steelers Super Bowl Lombardi Trophy presented to linebacker Bruce Davis, 6,200. LeBron James alternate King James jersey, 34,000 right now. Um, just a lot of bids coming in, and it kind of th that's how it goes here. You know, as it gets closer to, t to 10 o'clock, People you just keep in. hitting refresh on that. So bid just screen. a reminder, you have to have your bids in now before 10 p.m. Central Time if you want to take part in extended bidding. At 10 p.m. Central Time, a 30-minute clock will begin for each lot. And every time that lot is bid on, the 30-minute clock just for that lot will reset. So we could be here all night, Tony. We could. We could. happily. Well, the nice thing about that is it's kind of a happy medium because you don't want to have it go on all night long, but you want it kind of... You know, you want people to be able to get to we get want rest. To keep it fair. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's kind of tried and true, and it's probably the best method as far as closing auctions. Absolutely. So, another great item here, incredibly rare. You're going to hear us say that a lot tonight. <laughs> this is a 1933 Gaudi uncut sheet, wow. and you're going to have to look at our online ones. I'm not. We're not going to do the Heisman pose. It. No, no. Okay. No. And we've proven many times you don't know how to do the Heisman. Nothing impresses that guy. He's seen everything. He's seen everything. 
But this is an outstanding one. This is a great display piece mm -hmm. for card collectors. Sometimes you don't have a great way to display cards. This one, it's nicely framed. You hang it on the wall. And this is one that, even if somebody knows nothing about collecting, knows nothing about cards, it's a head turner. Yeah. Just because it's that beautiful design. I was going to say it's a beautiful it's set. Yeah, it is. And it you is. Got such big names in there. So that one should do about 80 thousand and the nice thing with that is it's not just baseball you've got you know you've got some of the other sports that really even have a, a lot of cards during that time period so it kind of gives a little diversity in there too absolutely now we're moving on to my favorite card in the auction right it's now. not ty cobb it's not ty cobb oh there's wow. some great cobb cards in there <laughs> but this is an 1886 in 167 old judge roger connor wow and it is You're talking early baseball. PSA 7. Anyone who's watched the show before knows I'm a big fan of mustachery. And this one's got it in spades right there. Uh, Connor was a great player, but even better mustache. Let me see. And this is a fantastic oh, one. Yeah, you Tony, bet he look. does. Wow. That really ups your game yeah. right there. But 1886, this is I a like PSA it. 7. The Polo Grounds was on the northeast corner of Central Park when they were holding it down. Yeah, and yeah, the New York Giants and a team bursting with 19th century legends, Monty Ward, Buck Ewing, Jim O'Rourke, Tim Keefe, Mickey Welsh, and uh, a lot of Hall of Famers. <laughs> the man whose mustachioed visage adorns this card right here, Roger <laughs> Connor. And he was an outstanding player. He led the team in nearly every offensive category. Uh, you know it was he led him this season with seven home runs in 1920. Babe Ruth passed him for the uh, home run. For the home run? Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is the guy. Uh, so this is the greatest Big Apple first baseman before Gehrig, and he's right in his prime here at 28, and he looks at and his mustache is in its prime. But uh, N167, very interesting set, just a dozen subjects. They were all the New York Giants, and half of them are in Cooperstown. No. Wow. So very cool set. They picked well, didn't they, when they decided to make that set? Absolutely. <laughs> so 13 decades this card has been around. Uh, we should all be so lucky. Yes. But uh, there's only one other card from the entire set, and it's Tim Keith that shares a near mint rating, and none are higher. So if you're into vintage cards, this is as good as it gets right here. And almost as rated. early as it gets, too. There's only four of these in the PSA population, and this one's three grades superior to the closest one. So another one where you're getting the best of the best. That's what Heritage does. Tony. Oh, we try. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and speaking of the best of the best. Mike Provenzale. Right along. No, no, no. I'm oh, okay. Somewhere in the middle, somewhere I've been middle. told. This one is... It doesn't get any better than this one either. No, it it's doesn't. It's a 1941 Joe DiMaggio play ball. And this is a PSA 10, Tony. Wow. A Jim 10? Mint Jeez. 10. The only one right here. And 41 was the year of his hit streak. So you've got that going for it as well. But you should really check this one out online just to, you got to see it to believe. Yeah. It. And I mean, one. you can expand those photos so, so, so big. That right. Is. And uh, luckily they can't do that with our video feed here. So they've been <laughs> guys that. But... DiMaggio, of course, <laughs> one of the cornerstones of the hobby, and this is the only one in a PSA 10 right here. So we're thinking this is going to do about half a million dollars. Tonight. Again, the best of the best. And that one just got hit a couple times, too, I believe. Oh, it did? It did, yes. What's it at, Tony, right now? Oh, you, you want to... You want to... You want many updates from you. Okay, I'm sorry. I, so I am slacking at that. I will try to... right there. What's that? That's lot 14. I like how you, I like how you have the lot. Numbers. Yeah, we'll help the people out at home. So another outstanding one here. We haven't talked much about Mantle yet tonight, but... We usually we're, do. We're going to. Don't worry. We're going to get into him. This is a 1954 Bowman Mantle in a PSA 9. That smile right there on Mantle, that's the smile <laughs> of someone who's only known World Series success. <laughs> three seasons in the league, uh, three titles right there. And he's just dreamily looking off saying, this is easy. You know, this is so bad. I don't know why people complain about it. Um, but it's got perfect registration, flawlessly centered... White borders, sharp corners, everything you want right there. And there's none finer than this one right here. PSA 9. God. And, you know, the 52 mantle, a lot is made of it. And the 53, I think this is kind of an underrated one. I mm -hmm. love this portrait of mantle. He just looks happy. Yeah. He's carefree, that kid 
from Oklahoma that's making it big in the big leagues in a big way. So that one will be closing tonight as well, lot 19. The DiMaggio at 410,000 right now. Wow. 492 with with the the, the buyer's premium. So it was right there. We so said it was right at do, that number. Boy, how do those guys estimate it? They're, they're like the Vegas odd. <sighs> Don't makers. give them a bigger head. Except not shady. Do. 133 <laughs> people are tracking this lot. Yes. Which is. So a that's lot. a great thing on Platinum Night and on our website that you can do. You can track lots. You'll get notified of them. It'll keep it for you. Not everyone can afford a half a million dollar card. But maybe you want to see what it went for. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's what we're doing here tonight. And don't forget to track lots. And you can track them in any of our 40 departments. Exactly. Whether yeah. you collect it or not at HA.com. And we have some, we archive our prices as well. So I always tell people it's a very, very good price guide Absolutely. to go by. Just to see what the trends are in our, you know. Well, all the information you see on our lot pages is saved in the archives. The, of course, the final price. The high detailed images that you can enlarge at any time the date of the sale, what it went for, how many people bid on it, how many people were tracking it, all you want to know. So you're at an estate sale, you find something, you can look it up. We've probably sold it before. I have a lot of guys who will, re- who will, who will go to you know flea markets and garage sales and that kind of thing and reach out to us. It doesn't surprise um, me that you know a lot of flea market people. Oh, I love flea markets. Those are your people. Right I there. miss going to flea markets. <laughs> oh. So what do you got over there? We talked vintage, but let's talk about the other. Probably area. probably the, the, the hottest area of... The, of our industry would be on, on are some of these newer current cards, um, and this one here is a 2009 Bowman Chrome Mike Trout Orange Refractor, and uh, this is a Beckett 10 autograph and a Gem Mint 9.5 grade, 125,000. Uh, these have just gone up and up and up, and I think at some point here they will start winning. And if he does <laughs> ever get a World Series, I don't. I mean, his stuff could just could just keep on going up. But uh, investment wise, these things have been have gone just up. Just the modern side is doing really great right now. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and, yeah, uh, especially these high end, very rare ones. Because unlike when you and I were collecting as kids, where they made just people are educated. And the, not just well, they no, can. now they you know they have numbered cards and they're you know they have the autographs but they have, they have numbered cards and a lot of these are so limited and especially the high grade ones um, it's it's just so difficult to get some of these and they've gone up and up and up. I mean, it it's, it's just crazy what this card has done in the last, you know. I mean, Trout's always been a superstar. He's always yes, been just the, like you, Tony. Yeah, well, <laughs> not quite, but um, yeah. I mean, these just continue to go up and up and up, and uh, I don't see that changing anytime soon. I mean, he is the face of baseball right now, so he is. Yes. All right, and you said it's at one hundred and twenty-five thousand. We have an hour and thirty minutes until overtime. We've got a lot of great more action coming up. Some more experts. After the break, we're going to talk game-worn jerseys, mostly football jerseys, with Chris Nair. Oh, Have you ever met him before? I've met him. 1987, I think, was when I first met him. Wow. We'll get into all I that. I think we might have talked about that once, but uh, yeah. But first, we're going to talk about, we're going to have a little break, and you can watch a video about, there's a certain game-worn expert out there that you may be surprised that he knows so much about an incredible basketball collection from Louisiana we have. Check it oh, out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is pretty Coach Ogeron. How do you feel about the lots in this upcoming sale? Well, coaching the Tigers is my lifeblood. But collecting game-worn jerseys from the great state of Louisiana is my squad of And we've got some incredible jerseys in this sale. Let's start with this Willis Reed game-worn shirt, shooting shirt from Grambling State, great university in the great state of Louisiana. As I always say about game-worn jerseys, we've got to the left and right now. This jersey is as sweet as a hurricane from Pat O's and the wares. Twice as strong. White tackle drill on black doreen. And you know I like hard tackle. You know I like a hard tackle. I do know you like hard tackle. Not like a hard tackle. So, Coach, tell us about the Pettit jersey. Bob Pettit, a great player from the great state of Louisiana, who played for the Tigers. He was mean as a gator and twice as hungry. And we got a great item from Bob Pettit. His shooting shirt right here. Even a blind man on a galloping horse can see this is a great item, item right here. It's flashy as a wrap with a gold tooth, you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-
That was a great play, wasn't it? It was. Go Tag. Go Tag. Thanks, Coach. We really look forward to seeing how these items do in the upcoming sale. All right, now come on, my new. Go Tag. now tell the people where you're huh. they can find you yeah they can find me usually in chicago or dallas when i'm cataloging here um but we have a beautiful office on 215 west ohio street uh a great staff there we have a coin expert there we have some art people uh and me and i guess we may be having a comics person soon oh, nice. that's top secret for Ooh, you. <laughs> wow you get the inside you get the breaking right news here. right from narrett yes, nice yes, so it was 10 degrees when I was there yesterday before I left on my flight and got here, and it was at least 30 degrees warmer. So That's why you're bringing the heat. I'm, so I'm always man. bringing the heat, bringing baby. The heat. <laughs> so, Nerit wears a lot of hats for us, but he's one of the foremost experts on football in the hobby, in the world, perhaps. I'm going to say it, in the world. Wow. So it's high praise. I ain't, I ain't too proud to, to, be, to, to brag a little bit. <laughs> So proud he could barely get that brag oh out. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> so what do you got over there, Chris? So this is a really cool piece. Uh, one of the best running backs, and maybe one of the most underrated running backs, even though he is in the Hall of Fame, Jim Taylor. Green Bay Packer, great. Uh, under the Lombardi Dynasty championship teams of the 60s. This is a, a pretty cool one because this is an early 60s example uh road white doreen jersey and it doesn't have the manufacturer's tag in it this probably was used in practice uh as well as game play uh, as you can see the wear is pretty excessive uh, but i mentioned that because the tag has been removed or it fell out um but you can tell by the the serifs in in in, on the number style that this was a red fox manufactured jersey and Red Fox is actually, I believe, Dallas-based or... Um, I thought you were talking about... I'm coming, Elizabeth. No, oh, my no. God. <laughs> nice. Uh, but Red Fox uh, produced jerseys for the Packers in the early 60s, and this would date right 
till around the time of the NFL championship game in 1962 when the Green Bay Packers defeated the New York Giants at Yankee Stadium. So this very well may have been used in the 62 championship game. And that was his big, I mean, that, was that wasn't only Jim big Taylor's game. big year. That was the Green Bay Packers, arguably the best team in Packer history. Oh, wow. uh, I believe That's they only lost one game, maybe one tie that year. Um, they lost to the Lions on Thanksgiving Day, I believe. Look there at that you go. Yes. right there. And I think Star got sad. He's always trying to show me. No, oh, I'm not. Is. I'm He's sorry. Like, you don't no. know everything. Do no, you? I'm. Just... He was poring over stats before Chris came <laughs> yeah. on just to find. No, a few no, no. To throw out there. No, no, no. So yeah, it's a cool jersey. Right now, it's sitting at twenty-three thousand dollars. The estimate, I believe, is forty thousand plus. So a little bit uh, of room to move. Um, and I expect that it'll get a few bids in the extended bidding time at 10 p.m. Central Time. Nice. And you've got another Packer player over there. Packer player, but not a Ooh. Packer jersey, which makes this one really, really interesting. Broke our um, hearts. Obviously, everybody remembers the drama that ensued <laughs> when Brett Favre retired like 100 times, uh, went to the Jets, <laughs> went to the Vikings, our division rival Vikings and really upset a lot of the green and gold faithful. But at any rate, he, uh, maybe his, his best accomplishment other than, uh, leading his team to Super Bowl 31 championship in the 96 season. Uh, Brett Favre is, is probably most remembered for his Iron Man streak. Sure. This is actually the, one of the most historic jerseys in the hobby for football, for, at least for modern football. This was the jersey, the last jersey that he wore during, at the end of the Ironman streak. It was 297 straight starts at quarterback. Okay. Think of that nowadays, even with the ticky-tack um, rules that they have in, in place for quarterbacks. Let your opinions be known on the rules. I right mean, there. nobody is ever going to touch that record. Even half of that record. I, I, I even a quarter see of that record, like... You know, to, to go a whole season without missing a, a start is crazy at quarterback. I mean, look at Pat Mahomes this year. I thinking that, too. Um, he, I think he was at a quarterback sneak, and he dinged up his yeah, knee. Yeah, that's like, like the one-yard line. This yeah, is a cool one. I mean, the patches on the front are great, the captain's patch, and then the anniversary patch. And this one even has some, a huge face wow. mask mark, I believe, uh, right there, white face mask mark. Came right from Brett Favre. Our consigner got it right from him. There's a video of our consigner obtaining it right from Brett Favre. Uh, it's photo mats, rock solid. It's very low right now, surprisingly. It's going to climb. But uh, if you want a value pick in the auction, this is it. It's only at 10500 right now. I mean, this should be a $40,000 jersey. It should be in Canton. This is comparable to a Lou, Gehr you know, Lou Gehrig streak. Cal Ripken Street, but they didn't have defensive linemen coming after them. <laughs> so diving at their this knees. This is yes. one heck of a jersey. I'll stop bragging about it now. Like we talked about earlier, the bookend pieces. Yeah, you and did the mention end. that. This is the yeah, end right there. And also in the auction, we also have Brett Favre's last ever jersey. So. Um, after he ended the streak, he played I don't know how many more games, but we also have his final Tony, jersey. Do you know that? He didn't it might have, it might have been like didn't three games or yeah. two games. It was just a, it was at the end of this. I remember he was just getting pummeled oh. by defenses in that last game, and he actually got knocked out that final game and never he came did. back. Yeah. I think they were playing the Bills, and he just got mutilated. I think you're right. So, All good right. pieces. I got something here. Of course, I had to uh, pull out a Cowboys jersey because, you know, America. America's and team. And this is a cool one I found. This is a 64 to 65 Don Perkins game worn Cowboys jersey. It's a Mears A10. Brief but brilliant career for Perkins. Oh, uh, only eight seasons. He's a Hall of Famer. He is. And top 10 finisher in rushing yards every season. Uh, 61 rookie of the year. And underrated player. Underrated player. He's an Heavy underrated man. player, but collectors you know desire his stuff like it's not like it's something that's gonna go for five thousand dollars what is it estimated at like fifteen thousand fifteen thousand yeah. uh it's the long sleeve so not as much wear it only wore it a few games but uh, well, and, and, nice and you got repair. you got the local manufacturer southland exactly Southland's yeah. Yeah. right here it's got a nice it's not a red fox but <laughs> 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 
Like, I do love the red fox tags because they have a little red fox on them. They're pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, I'll get off that. But yeah, great game worn jersey from the first decade of the Cowboys' existence. Hard to come by. First year of the Cowboys' existence. Go. 1960. There we go. You are. That reminds me, you know, you're actually a good fan. Uh, one day we had our card expert, Derek Grady, over at my apartment. Wow, you're really and giving he, out the information now. He is now. a self-proclaimed huge Packer or, or Cowboy fan. I can't believe you tell me. And he uh, fell asleep in the second quarter. Yes. <laughs> I was there and I looked over. He said, And Tony and I were looking at each other. I'm like, he ain't a Cowboy fan. He fell asleep. You wow, were... if he hears this, Chris. What, it, what, it, what era was this? Wade Phillips era? Because then... Uh, uh, no, it would have been probably Jason Garrett's it. first year, I would I would imagine. Yeah, I he'd put anyone to sleep. Miles Austin probably was playing. <laughs> Remember him? Yeah, right, he, was, he was sleeping. Let's keep rolling. What you got over there? Uh, what's the next one? Tom Brady. Let's talk Tom about Brady. him. Who's, who's that? <laughs> so... I mean, you got a Tom Brady jersey in the auction. We got to talk about it. Yeah. I mean, these usually pop up maybe once or twice a year at auction. This is a Tom Brady photo matched jersey, and it's sitting at sixty-five thousand dollars. And remember, that's without the buyer's premium, so that's going to approach, you know, the eighty thousand dollars mark. Eighty thousand dollar mark if it doesn't get any more bids. I think it should be a six-figure jersey. It is. Soon. It will be. It will be. But the the really cool thing with this jersey, there are a couple of cool things. He wore it for three games. You know, a lot of times you'll see these Tom Brady jerseys that he, it's photo matched to one game. This is a three-game jersey, and it's unwashed, or at least we believe it's unwashed. There's enough dirt stains and ball marks on this jersey that I believe that it's an unwashed Tom Brady jersey. Tony, um, you want to give that a smell to confirm? Tony, check it out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sniffer, <laughs> sniffer of a... Top in the hobby right there. Sniffer of a fine canine... I mean, you might what get a whiff of Giselle on there. You never know, so that'll make it worthwhile. <laughs> no, no Giselle on there, it. There, yeah. There's no perfume. Well, I gotta smell it. Yeah. <laughs> right, so anyway, yeah. I mean, anytime we, we have a Jordan photo match jersey in the auction, we have a Tom Brady photo match jersey in the auction. In five years, Goats. these are hundred and fifty thousand dollar jerseys. Write it down now. Financial planning from Mr. Chris. I mean, I He's think right. it's, if you're gonna He's buy right. stocks for a hundred thousand, don't buy stocks. Buy this. There you go. With the stock market. Yeah, plus, you can show this off. Nobody wants to see your exactly. pork belly stock certificate. Pork belly. Exactly. <laughs> Unless it's a Green Bay Packers stock certificate, which we also so, have in this. Whoa! Office, look at this guy. That's right. Wow. So I pulled this out. This is one of those great moments in NFL history. If you've watched the Super Bowl, I'm sure you remember. Not if you're a Cardinals this. fan, though. Not if you're a Cardinals no. fan. No. This is a 2009 James Harrison Super Kurt Bowl. Warner will not XL be bidding on that, I don't think. Game worn helmet. <laughs> And this is, he was wearing this on the second longest play in Super Bowl history. 18 seconds left in the first half. Arizona's down 7-10. to 10. They're on the two-yard line. Kurt Warner threw a pass to Anquan Bolden, and Harrison stepped in front right at the goal line. And the clock was run out. If he steps out of bounds, if he gets tackled, it doesn't matter. He took it and that's a lineman it. running that far. Yes, and he's a stocky guy. He's a hitter. For sure. And and, for uh, he can move. Yeah. The Steelers ended up winning 27 to 23, so it was a close game. And, well, they, uh, a lot of people say that was the turning point. I mean, oh, it, absolutely. It, you know, it has to be. Because they're going to go and score, and then to have, the, you know, to have right. Pittsburgh and get points when nobody thought that. Record six title for Pittsburgh right here, and you can see what kind of hitter he was. It is covered. In use right here. And at the time, that was the longest it was. touchdown in Super Bowl history. And the Steelers are pretty stingy about releasing stuff, so there isn't a lot of Steelers stuff out there. And a Super Bowl helmet and an iconic play. It, everybody knows that. The play. backstory of this, too, it was traded at the Pro Bowl Albert to Albert Haynesworth. Albert Hainsworth. Yes. And that's how it was secured. I think there's a Pro Bowl. Sticker, yeah, oh, it's, it's got the Super Bowl. It's got the Super Bowl. Gene Upshaw, oh yeah, morning patch yeah. for a sticker on the back. But a great inscription on there as well. So. I think the back of the helmet's the coolest part. It's got the American flag. Yeah. It's got the '92, the Gene Upshaw, uh, black circle decal, right. Super Bowl logo. It's pretty awesome. We do have a question from Facebook from Mindy. Hi, Mindy. Asking, she recently required a Giannis practice jersey and is curious on the value, so she'll see if she did good or not. You're asking the right people right here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we'll take this one. Value probably, I'd say about 1000 I mean, no matter what you're going to do well on that, he's going to win defensive play of the year. 
He could. MVP this year again. Finals MVP. Finals oh, I love champion. your thinking. You heard it here first. So wow, you know prediction. it's probably. And he's going to resign with the Bucks then, right? Of course. We okay. Oh, he just dunked. All right. All right. And uh, oh, a special treat here. We're going to switch over real quick. Oh wow. We'll talk about some baseball gamers, and we couldn't have this show without talking about this one. Another iconic moment that everyone remembers. This is the 1983 George Brett game worn jersey, and yes, this is what he was wearing during the Pine Tar game. And uh, this is something, you know, we see a lot of incredible material and heritage, but this is something that stops down the office when it comes in. Everybody, he, wants, to, everybody you know, wants to look at it. You know it. how excited Tony gets, and he was so excited when this came in. In fact, I think we have some video. Oh my God. You have Tony that video? I, came in. We do. Oh, I didn't know you guys got that. <laughs> oh. Can we roll that video? I bet he smelt it. <laughs> you gotta see this. This is great. And they're gonna open it up here. Let's see what they've got. A lot of excitement. Is that? I see the powder blue. That's gonna be a George Brett gamer. That's a home run of a consignment. What they're talking about is if it's the one from the Pine Tar incident. They may have a legitimate Pine Tar incident gamer here. I've seen the incident. They're huddled around. What they're talking about is, is that Pine Tar? I think they're going to show Tony. They are! And he's excited! He's going to have to be restrained. I've never seen that before. That's going to put Heritage ahead. To be fair, Tony's that excited about everything that we bring I in. Am. I so, am. But very cool. It's from 1983. Rookie home plate umpire Tim McClellan called him out in the royal meltdown that followed afterwards. And cool thing about it, it's even got a little pine tar stain wow. on the button path right here. So George Brett's done it all. 13-time All-Star. He's MVP. He won a World Series, but this is what he's most known for. The bat is in the Hall of Fame. So this That'll is never... Most- the, the one auction. of their most popular attractions, so they're not giving it up. So this is the most significant item from that event you're going to get. And we also have Tony right here. Show Actually, we have the baseball. Have. The home uh, run. The home run ball, and it was inscribed. That's the home run ball. That's the home it run is. ball, yes. I didn't even know we had the. Yes. Wow. And what goose like gossip. <laughs> what is that at? Uh, the estimate's 15000 but, I would uh, think that's worth like fifty thousand. Well, throw a bid in. I might. <laughs> <laughs> the inscriptions to Barry Helper. That's crazy. Barry, I threw the effing thing from Goose Gossage. I'm not gonna say Thank the word. You. Thank yes. you. We got kids watching. Yes. Kids. Barry, you deserve this. Thank you, George Brett, on the other side panel. Um again, I mean, you know I wonder how he got it. Like if uh one of his because it, was that in Kansas City? No, that was it was, it was in, in New, New York, York, and it went into the it it, it went into the stands. It, it didn't go into the like the bullpen or That's anything. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, so a yeah. fan gave it so, back or something. Or? I don't know that. Wow. But yeah, it's um they go hand in hand cool together. Piece. If you're gonna win that jersey, you're gonna want to have the ball too. And we also have uh, <clears> a throat> few throat> more lots related to the Pine Tar incident. We have a Lee McPhail letter about it, and a nice ephemeral lot that has. Uh, some George Brett pine tar in there, a can of his pine tar in there. Really? And some autograph photos of the event from him. That stuff's so. going to go nuts in extended bidding. It is. Yes, yes. And uh, so the ball and the jersey is tonight. The rest is tomorrow in session two. So a lot icon- of high, a iconic lot of- moment right there. A totally iconic moment. All right, Tony, get in on the action. A lot of high high quality items in session two as well. Yes, absolutely. Let's this one. All right. Graded a Mirrors A10. You could possibly say this is the nicest Campanella in the hobby. That uh, vintage Dodgers. I've, oh, I just love it with the fire engine red numbers and the blue. Fire engine fire red. Fire engine Whoa. red. I love I that. A world, word huh? We talked about that at the top. Completely unrestored <clears throat> Mirrors A10. Uh, 100,000 estimate. Right now it's at like 52,000. It has gone up steadily through the day. Uh, one of, if not the nicest Campanella jersey in existence. Set one from 1954. Oh, there it is. With the flag tag. 
Um, yeah, I mean, they have such a such a beautiful style. They do. The uh, Dodgers, they always have. And uh, uh, this one is easily one of the nicest. Another underrated guy right there. A little bit, yeah. Vanilla. Yeah. What did he win? Four MVPs, I think, or three, three MVPs? Three, I believe. Three MVPs, yeah. Wow. Should have been four, is that what you're saying? Yes. I'm salty. No. Keep going, Tony. Let's talk All right. about that. One cap. of my favorite pieces in this. Too. I love, always liked Richard. No, 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 no. Let's do the cap. Slow down. Slow down. I love Richard. There's Hunter. an order to things. This, the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel did a wonderful article on um, on this cap and the other caps from the a collector in Milwaukee. Not even a, I didn't know this. He was not even like a baseball fan. He's not really a collector. <laughs> Um, he's more into like... He's going to be after this off. Yeah, he will be. Um, but they did a fabulous story on the front page. Hank Aaron's game-worn rookie cap from 1954. He came up as number five. Um, he wasn't going to. He wasn't supposed to make the team. Really? No. I didn't was, know that. Yeah, right. I so didn't. You, oh, give the kid a shot. Bobby Thompson breaks his ankle in spring training, and that allows Aaron to make the team. And, of course, the rest is history. Has the number five um, crossed out and number 12 was added. Uh, these hats were produced in Boston. Horace Partridge uh, made these hats, so uh, these were only used in 53. So did that used to have a B on it and they took it off? And... No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I, I think the, the first year in Milwaukee they used um, uh, that manufacturer. It's cool then... as the felt. It, it does, it does, and uh, you know we sold the bat for what I believe like two hundred thousand. A rookie, hundred and a quarter, hundred and a quarter for one of his rookie. We bats. estimated at like twenty thousand plus. Yes, and it went crazy. you took that in, right? Yep. Another Milwaukee collect, non-collector that had it. That I just think. had, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, incredibly <sighs> difficult to find any early Aaron stuff, and this being his rookie hat, uh, you know, this thing. Cool backstory to it. Great backstory, the yeah. Th they had a laundry service, and players came in all the time. They would they would wash the uniforms and all that. So I think once a week, just reading the story, once a week they would they would bring all the stuff in, and uh, this sat in a box for years, decades on end, and I believe the consigner's daughter had it, and... <laughs> and he had five caps total. He had another yeah. another Hank Aaron with the chain link embroidered name inside oh, of it. Yeah, on yeah, the, the, the head. Joe Adcock and then a uh, Warren Spawn. A Warren Spawn. Did he have a Matthews too? He had a no. He had Ernie Johnson's um, grandfather's. Well, let's look that up. It was a nice yeah, collection. Yeah, yeah. It, is, <laughs> it is a nice collection. These guys can talk about it all day. Sure. And speaking of legendary pieces, this is one right here. That one has gone up a great deal. So I think it's at ninety thousand right now. That's it's one another, of the coolest style. Show it is. It ever. is. Yeah, absolutely. This is a nineteen nineteen to twenty urban red favorite the game logo. worn Man. Chicago White Sox uniform. This debuted in the nineteen nineteen World Series. You wow. guys heard about that World Series? Interesting. Oh, you have. Okay. Just a little bit. <laughs> I wonder if the Houston Astros heard of that one. So Faber had the Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get someone to bang Too on the trash soon. can over there for that? <laughs> so Faber had the Spanish flu, which uh, during that time period took out 5% of the world's population. So no joke. Wow. There's a little history lesson for you right there. I Victimized not. by the Spanish flu pandemic, Chicago White Sox star pitcher Red Faber proved too ill to participate in a World Series, which would live... <laughs> <laughs> but... So that's why he was relegated to the bench. That's why he wasn't in on the fix. He did not know about it. Um, but this You could say is... that's a clean jersey. Yes, yes. Uh, so the World Series, of course, would live in infamy. <laughs> Eight men out. And, uh, you know, even though... Show uh, that patch on the side, Mike. Yeah. yeah that is beautiful. That. Even though the owner, Kaminsky... Uh, he was, was cheap. <laughs> he was cheap, and that was some of the blame wow. for the fix was in there on that, but he sprung for new uniforms for the World Series. He did. Oh, it. I didn't know that. And so, so they wore that in the World Series and then carried it over to the next correct. year. Correct. So he wore it in 1920, Faber. He had a great season then, but this is the only known surviving home representation of this format, and yeah, it's got the uh, interlocking socks. What is that at right now? What's the price? I think it was 90000 90000 <clears throat> And it's the whole uniform. It includes the pants and, of course, 
the White Sox. All, or I thought they were the Black Sox. <laughs> well, they were after this, but he wasn't. He kept the White Sox. You get the free comedy. And it's all it's original? All, all original. So you got wow. the twin interest here of the Hall of Fame ownership, Red Faber, Hall of Fame ace, and the earth-shaking White Sox vintage. So I mean, that's in phenomenal the, condition as well for something is, from 1919. It's beautiful. And everybody knows about the 1919 World Series collectors and those who do not alike. And to own something from that is incredibly rare. I mean, even ticket stubs get a few thousand apiece. It's true. All right, now you can talk about your boy. One of my favorite players, Richard Hamilton. This just tells you how some teams wear jerseys for a long extended period of time. This is photo matched to, I believe it's 45 games. And this was worn in wow. 2004, 2005. They went to the finals, lost to the Spurs. But this was used all the way from preseason till the end of the year. Wow. And, of course, they added the finals logo on. And it, it was it, it, this has been photo matched to the finals. And he used the jersey, nonstop motion when he was on the court. Yes, yes. I just love... If you look on the inside of this, this is this white portion of the back neck trim has turned almost like a pinkish color from being laundered that many times. Uh, it's at twelve hundred right now, but I I can see this thing going for two or three thousand easily. More. Yeah, yeah. If you want the finest Richard Hamilton, this is it, and I don't think there's anything that's even a close second. There you go. All right, one more, Tony. What else you got over there? Oh. We've got... You can hear the incitement in his voice at all times. This was a fun one. This was actually... It was purchased years ago from Heritage, and it was re-consigned, or it was consigned from the guy who won it. And Derek Jeter, 2004 game-used helmet. I believe he used it for like 12 games, including the postseason... Um, oh, there you go. Yeah, Jeter stuff right now, of course, is extremely hot and, and you want always Jeter collected. postseason stuff. Exactly, exactly, and uh, it's a very personal item. Uh, a lot of scratches on this. Uh, there's some pine tower, it looks like. Really, really good use, and uh, this has a, I think it's like a fifteen thousand estimate. It's at about eight or nine thousand right now, and I think there'll be spirited bidding on this thing again with him going in the Hall of Fame. It's just gonna once he actually goes in, the prices are going up for Jeter stuff. They always have been. Once yes. he goes in, it's you're gonna, gonna, see gonna continue, especially rise. something that he used for. I mean, twelve games. I mean that that's pretty good use for a helmet. Absolutely, so, nice signature uh, on there too. Beautiful signature. He always had such a nice autograph. Just yeah, like you, Tony. No, no, mine's <laughs> terrible. Just terrible. Well, Chris, always a pleasure. Love having you in town. Uh, you should have us out to Chicago. Why don't you invite us up there sometime? Anytime you'd like. All right. I wouldn't advise coming in the next couple months because of the weather. but Maybe wait till it warms up a little bit. But pleasure. If you're in Chicago or in the Chicago area, stop by and see Chris. Chris, you want to give that address out again? 215 West Ohio Street in River North. Great right area. Downtown. Beautiful office. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, it's a great office. He'll even take you to Portillo's if you're nice to him. Absolutely. <laughs> That's a promise. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a short break. And you can learn a little bit about some other heritage departments. And when we come back, our head cataloger, Jonathan Shire, is going to talk about awards. Ooh. Hi, this is Pete Howard, consignment director for entertainment and music for Heritage Auctions. <laughs> we are wildly just so happy to have this poster. We've never had it before, and it is the seminal psychedelic concert poster in music history, December of 1965. I mean, that predates any Bill Graham or Family Dog concert poster. And the Grateful Dead's name is on there, and that makes this the very first Grateful Dead concert poster. Just a few weeks earlier, they were calling themselves the Warlocks. But take a look at this psychedelic art. Isn't this crazy? And notice how down the middle there's a line to be cut. You were supposed to cut the poster in half and then stack one half on top of the other, and that way it fit onto telephone poles just fine. And then that space in the lower right-hand corner is where you would write the event. And this poster was used, for example, in Muir Beach, California, the Grateful Dead's hometown of Palo Alto, and the Fillmore Auditorium. But boy, I'll tell you, this poster is really rare in any condition, but look at this beautiful 9.4 condition, the best copy ever graded of this poster, and we're so happy to have it for auction. Just an absolute masterpiece of psychedelic art.
Hi, this is Pete Howard, consignment director for entertainment and music for Heritage Auctions. <laughs> we are wild. Hi there, this is Pete Howard, consignment director for Heritage Auctions in music and entertainment. And what a fantastic Jimi Hendrix concert poster we have in this upcoming auction, known as FE7 for Fillmore East 7. Uh, this is the Jimi Hendrix experience live at Bill Graham's Fillmore East. And it's not a tour poster. He was not on tour. That's one of the reasons it's so popular. All Jimmy was doing was recording his masterpiece album, Electric Ladyland, at Electric Lady Studios in Greenwich Village, not too far from here. In matter of fact, the previous 10 days, Jimmy had recorded both the long and short versions of Voodoo Child, so you know how great he sounded. But David Edward Bird was the concert poster artist, and what's fabulous about this piece, it was the first one printed. Mr. Bird was at the printing plant. Victimized by the Spanish flu pandemic, Chicago White Sox star pitcher Red Faber proved too ill to participate in a World Series which would live in infamy and doom eight of his teammates to banishment from organized ball. But the weakened and underweight future Hall of Famer was relegated to bench duty as the sport's greatest scandal unfolded before him, unaware that eight of his teammates had sold the world championship to corrupt gamblers. Though penny-pinching team owner Charles Kamitsky is widely assigned some culpability for the scandal, most notably for benching ace Eddie Seacott to block him from claiming a victories bonus, the Hall of Fame owner sprung for new uniforms to debut in the 1919 World Series, and here we find the only known surviving home representation of that extraordinarily desirable format. The gorgeous style features the classic socks over the heart and the key double White Sox logo on the left sleeve. The jersey remains in astonishingly fine condition, and the Chicago-based Wilson & Company label and interior collar is still firmly affixed. The twin inducements of Hall of Fame ownership and earth-shaking White Sox vintage makes this a most appealing target for the advanced uniform collector. In any other fight, you'd pick the guy holding the bat. But when rookie home plate umpire Tim McClellan pointed the knob of George Brett's Louisville Slugger at the future Hall of Famer with his left hand and signaled out with his right, all conventional wisdom was stampeded by wild-eyed fury. That otherwise inconsequential July 24, 1983 game at Yankee Stadium would prove to be George Brett's defining moment despite a world championship, 13 all-star game appearances, three AL batting titles, and a 1980 MVP award. It likewise remains one of the most famous events in the entirety of post-war Major League Baseball history. Since the bat itself is unavailable to the collecting community, enshrined for eternity in the Baseball Hall of Fame, the offered jersey will reign forever as the most significant and desirable relic from that contest within private hands. Certainly any garment from Brett's professional wardrobe carries enormous collecting intrigue, but this powder blue beauty is quite literally as good as it gets for the greatest figure in Royals franchise history. The style is one of the most directly associated with that special era in KC. White tackle twill on powder blue, with Royals 5 on front giving way to Brett 5 on verso. Brett autographs both sides with the obverse noted Pine Tar Game 72483. Just to the right of Brett's signature, at the edge of the button path, we can spot a small Pine Tar stain, and the entire jersey is soft and supple from sweaty wear. Rarely does the opportunity to own the most significant artifact of a player and a franchise present itself to the hobby, but we find just such a chance here for one lucky bidder to add a piece of royalty to their collection. We're back with some more George Brett madness right there. Um, so, we got about an hour left before extended bidding begins. Just a reminder, you've got to have your bids in now for session one. You session two, it. you can keep bidding all night. And after extended bidding starts tonight, Tony and I are going to talk about some of the lots that are in session two while we keep you updated on what the prices of the session one material is doing. So, this man on our far right, <laughs> backbone of our department, 
How long have you worked for Heritage? 15 yeah. years. 15 wow. years. Yeah. Yeah. He is our head cataloger. If you've read through the Platinum Auction and most of our other auctions, read the incredible descriptions in there. Um, it's like a novel sometimes. In fact, he it is. writes a pretty lengthy novel every time we do that. <laughs> But he really paints a picture, and he's also one of our best researchers. This is Mr. Jonathan Shire. Hi, folks. Yeah, Good welcome. To be here. welcome. Good to be here. Um, and so Jonathan's going to talk to us. We have a lot of incredible awards, uh, rings, awards, championship material, and he's going to talk to us about some of the material we have in that category. So it looks like we're starting out with the 23, <coughs> excuse me, Yankees pocket watch, which is uh, for any person who would possibly be interested would know that that's the first of 27 world championships for the New York Yankees franchise. Um, it's the only one <clears throat> that's not a ring. It's a, it's a beautiful piece of, uh, of, of artistry, um, and uh, it's as good as it gets, really, for, for, uh, for championship awards based upon those, those two aspects of it. You recall we sold Babe Ruth's Correct. example of this watch. 700-something thousand dollars, I believe, and probably if we got that back, we would do even better. So uh, there's a lot of room to go on, obviously. Wally Pip is no Babe Ruth, but he's, he's, he's no... Notable, uh, for he's, sure. He's no... What's the term? No. Slouch? That's Footnote. yeah. <laughs> no, it's like no. I can't remember the phrase. I now, introduced you as a wordsmith. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> you lied. Uh, <laughs> Thesaurus.com. Um, but um, yeah, Wally Pip is of course best known for being the guy who uh, decided that he wanted to take a day off, and a guy named Lou Gehrig came in at first base for him, and stayed there for two thousand one hundred thirty games. <laughs> um, he had the he had the famous uh, quote: "I took the two most expensive aspirin of all time." Um, <laughs> but he Why? he was actually, I want to say, sixteen and seventeen. Um, it was or it was the year before, two years before Babe Ruth consecutively, he was home run champion of the American Leagues. I mean, he I think it was like home yeah, right, yeah, it was something like that. <laughs> um, but uh, still, he got that title. Yeah, he was he was known as he was known as a slugger. He, he yeah, slouch. But what is it? No, um, I'm gonna come back later on the show. <laughs> We're gonna get this. We're gonna get Jump this. right back in. It's like it's no fried chicken, but it's not that. It's <laughs> it's some food. Um, but uh, he yeah, Wally Pip. Um, is uh, is a notable figure. Um, he's you know probably top five of that twenty three team, and uh, it's a beautiful piece. Um, Consigned by his family. Yeah, right? yeah. So it's making its auction debut here. Uh, you know, just a just a great investment piece and and uh, and an amazing piece of of Yankees history and World Championship history. It really it covers every base. All right, and moving on, we've got the 27 ring, I believe. Yeah, that was, um, of course, 27 was the third world championship of the New York Yankees, and uh, many people consider that to be the greatest, not only Yankees team of all time, but baseball team of all, of all time, Murderers Row. That was the year that Babe Ruth hit 60 home runs. It was the year uh, Lou Gehrig won his first MVP they crushed the Pittsburgh Pirates in four games in a World Series sweep, uh, just thoroughly dominant. And um, so what what did Ruth's uh, 27 ring, we didn't sell that unfortunately, but that sold like, recently for over a million dollars. It was. So, so again, um, this... Probably would have done too if we'd had it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gazella is not Babe Ruth, but he's no whatever that phrase is. I can't think of that either. Yeah. Help us out on Facebook. <laughs> Somebody you know, chime in. I can't believe that neither of you know because it's such a common phrase. Um, if you're out there and you know what Jonathan's talking about. Know. Know. Helping Jonathan yeah. figure out a phrase is kind of like giving Babe Ruth home run oh, tips. Like, you know, <laughs> you're you're babe, what are you doing? <laughs> But uh, but yeah, twenty seven Yankees. Everybody Play a ring. Yeah, too. yeah. Everybody everybody knows it. Um, and it's in pretty good shape too. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, it is. We it had is. one that was in rough rough shape. Yeah. So this one you can still yeah, read. Yeah, you can everything. see. Yeah, um, yeah. It's 
14 karat gold, right? So it's it's a little softer than the than a lot of the modern rings. Um, so these just old, as gaudy as them, right? Yeah, not quite. But <laughs> those those old rings in 14 karat gold are usually quite worn down, and this one is is not nearly as bad as the average. Um, so um, so. If you're a Yankees fan, those those two those two pieces, the 23 watch and the and the 27 ring, are are, are really exciting pieces. I'm a fourth generation Yankees fan myself. Um, I'm not in the market for anything of that. <laughs> oh, you're right now, but I was um, top but, level yeah, championship yeah, vintage right yeah, there. Yeah, it's 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 great stuff. It's, it's exciting for me to see. And the cool thing about awards is, you know, very likely none of us are going to win a World Series. True. Probably. Well, but at our age, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That ship has sailed. But <laughs> having an opportunity to own the hardware from those who did is very exciting to collectors. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone understands a, a championship ring. People look at a at, at a at a batter jersey. And, oh, you show them a ring. Like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. They get it. Yeah. They get it. All right. What else you got? What's next on the list? There? <clears throat> what is next? It looks like that is the uh, thirty-nine Hall yeah. of Fame induction watch. Yeah, box. I've never seen one of these before. Have you, Tony? I haven't. Yeah. No. Um, of course, thirty-nine was the inaugural, the ground, uh, the ribbon cutting for the uh, for the Baseball Hall of Fame. Thirty-nine is just a massive year in baseball history. Of course, centennial season, which is I'm sure why they opened the Hall of Fame at that time. But also debut of of Ted Williams, the farewell of Lou Gehrig, um, the uh, the Yankees won another World Championship. <laughs> <in New Year's. laughs> and, and, With a big <laughs> smile on his face. <laughs> and, uh, oh, nice. And and Eddie Collins uh, went into the Hall of Fame with you know Babe Ruth, Ty Cobb, Honus Wagner, Cy Young, Connie Mack, like all of just the absolute massive names of of the uh, first half of the of the 20th century, and I guess a little bit of the end of the of the 19th. Um, so something from uh, first. Uh, inaugural class Hall of Famer that that signifies his entry into that into that brotherhood is is again an enormously historically significant item and, you and look having at it, something that if Jonathan says he's never seen it yeah that's saying yeah, yeah I get yeah. pretty jaded about a lot of stuff but uh, <laughs> but that that impressed me the, these first three uh, probably everything on this list but those first three in particular are are really really special. Um, whether you're into awards or not, I think uh, if you aren't, you should consider beginning um, because this is... Start right now? Yeah, this is... <laughs> Tonight! It's great, great stuff. All right, and next on your list is... What is oh, the it? 58 Yankees ring. Presented to Tony, Tony Kubek. Kubek. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, again, beautiful piece. Uh, I love the design on that Yeah, yeah. And, and that era of course of of the Yankees was just so dominant uh what was it 49 50 51 52 53 56 58 um and so this was this was the end of the 50s domination for them it's also a, kind of a satisfying piece because they lost to the uh to the Milwaukee Braves and and uh in '57, and, and then they uh, and then they avenged it the next year, and that, so that's what that what that ring signifies. Uh, and it's you were talking about gaudy rings like that. <laughs> that is a that's a classy ring, right? right. Mm -hmm. That looks good. Yeah, you could yeah. wear that out. It's not yeah, over you, the top. you could, you could. Yeah. Um, it's and it's they used the style a few years, so it's kind of like the most recognizable Yankees championship ring format. And uh, they just kept the press going. Right, yeah, <laughs> right. They probably just made them years ahead. <laughs> <laughs> just tossed it out. Yeah. If it not win. Melt it down if you don't. <laughs> oh, all right. What else we got? This is incredible. What do we have? Oh, the 56 John A. Bud oh, yeah. Memorial Award. You know, it's funny. When, when I first saw that, I thought, is that... Is that really what it looked like? And then we found a photo. Do we? Can we show that on the screen? We Do we have that? But uh, if you go to ha.com, yeah. you can, and it's lot listing. You can see it. Yeah, we found a photo of Mantle <laughs> holding it. So that is, it's a photo matched award. Of course, um, 
56 was the Triple Crown season. It's right. uh, really Mantle at his absolute greatest. Uh, a great year in Yankee history. Of course, they won the world championship. That was <laughs> Don Larson's there, perfect right? game. <laughs> um, but uh, batting championship uh, is what is what that signifies. One of the three pillars of the uh, of the Triple Crown. What, what was he? Three six three fifty three three sixty three. Oh, I'm going to go with 363. Tony, you got a guess? It'll say on there. Can you read it? <laughs> my eyesight. I should have worn my glasses. Oh, there's that photo. Yeah. There's, oh, yeah. There's sure. The, there's the photo, but you got you to gotta get close. It doesn't matter. You can look, you can look it <laughs> look up. Look at LK line in there, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's such a, it's such a cool wow. photo. Um, but you do not often see photo matched awards right. um so that that's a really cool aspect of that but a- anything connecting to mickey mantle in that triple crown season is 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 really so i've never seen another one of that style Mm-mm. of award either they must be out there i doubt they did it just that that one year but they have to be rare because i, I would have seen several of them if they, at least if they weren't um so it's for rag right there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, good job on the 27 It's rings. fun to work at Heritage. What can we say? <laughs> for the uh, for the mantle crowd and the and the, the big crowd. That that is a really unique and and special item. What's that at now? Can you can you see? Uh, I bet we can. That 27 ring just got hit. Just got Did it. Jonathan, there. keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> keep talking. Well, Jonathan's one of our great researchers and he knows all these stories and quotes from years of writing all this high-level material that we're lucky to see at Heritage. Mm-hmm. Was it 35? 35,000 mm-hmm. yeah. right now. Yeah, it's, so it's, got, it's got room to move. All right, let's, let's keep it going. The more things he talks about, the more business <laughs> I'm going to get. Is it still me? Still if you want your item talked about, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let, let us, us know. know. And if you're watching on Facebook and there's an item you'd like to hear us talk about. Um, it's funny, Wally Pip just got <laughs> it, too. <laughs> All right, uh, pass me that sheet there. Yeah. Let's see. I'll run sheet here. All right, we've got uh, 64 Yankees American League Championship Rolex. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the watch people were really excited about that. It's it's like a, a Our really... Heritage timepieces department. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, of course, they thought it was cool that it was from Mickey Mantle, but apparently, like, Rolex collectors, this is a really sp- special kind of even taking Mantle out of it. But, of course, the, the Mantle aspect is, is more interesting to me, although I do I do think Rolexes are cool. Yeah, um, I mean, who doesn't? 64, of course, was his last World Series, and he was, he was in a ton of them. They didn't win. That's why it's an American League Championship Award. Right. But um, it's, you know, it's a... It's not often that there's a piece that you could actually, like a piece of memorabilia that you could like legitimately right. wear and use and stuff. And that people would say, wow, it's an amazing Rolex. And then you yeah, could say, yeah, right. it was Mickey Mantle. Yeah. Mantle's, you know, that's yeah, the that cherry on it's, top yeah, right there. Yeah, I, th- I think people are pretty... Spoken pretty... like someone who's worn someone else's championship <laughs> art. <laughs> I've never done it, but I, if, I, if, if someone wants to buy that watch for me, I will wear that watch. Oh, Probably. No. That's a promise right there. <laughs> And you could get it was worn by Mantle and yeah, Jonathan right, yeah. right there. Then Scott's the limit for the next donor. But yeah, um, the Mantle inscription on the underneath of the face. Yeah, yeah, and it's got it. It, it has the the bat and hat logo. I want to say engraved in there as well, which is really cool because often when you see a watch engraved, it's just letters. The text. Um, right. Yeah, but um, yeah, that that is uh, that's. Almost as cool as the as the twenty three uh, Pip watch in my in my opinion. It's yeah. it's a toss up. Um, it just depends on your era. But well, but if you wore a vest, you could wear them both. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you were wow, really concerned about getting somewhere on time. <laughs> <laughs> Which, as anyone knows me, I'm not. Yes. So. <laughs> All right, and Jonathan's got two more. This is the sixty six Baltimore Orioles World Series championship. Ring. Oh yeah, that was Brooks, Brooks Robinson. Robinson. Brooks yeah, Robinson. that was uh, we we, uh, we sold Brooks Robinson's collection. How long ago is that now? Oh, about four or five years. Five years. Are, Are you five serious? Years? It's that God, long. God, it seems like it. yesterday. It does. And and Brooks Robinson um, is probably my favorite non-Yankee. Just such a great guy. Uh, like for as for as brilliant as he was, uh, 
pretty much you ask anybody who's the greatest third baseman of all time, they're going to say Brooks Robinson. And he has, what, 18 gold gloves or something right, like which that. Which we sold them all. It was yeah, incredible. Yeah. Um, and it, it's been said, don't meet your heroes. But if your hero is Brooks Robinson, yeah. you should meet him. Yeah, He's yeah. incredible. Just Great such storyteller. A nice guy. Just so humble and, right. and it just feels like he was the luckiest man in the world to, to have the life that he did. Um, and this was, this might have been the best piece in the, uh, it was up there. A uh, championship ring from a Hall of Famer who was basically the guy. I mean, now it's, now the team is is two the guys. It's, right. it's him and it's Cal Ripken. Um, but for before Cal Ripken, Brooks Robinson was the, the face Oriole, of the franchise. yeah, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, well, I mean, he was there from like day one. I want to say, I think he, I think That's he might have rookied in '54, which was the first year of the Orioles. So, um, so a championship ring from, you know, a, a pantheon figure, um, both in baseball at large, but particularly for that franchise, is, is, I mean, what can you say? That's that's as good as it gets again. So. Um, hopefully, hopefully people are, uh, are, are paying attention in Baltimore and all over the world where, yeah. <laughs> Whoever you're a fan of, that's a very yeah. desirable piece. Yeah. And then last, I can't believe it, Jonathan's going to talk about a Red Sox World yeah. Series ring from 2004, no yeah. less. Yeah, it's sitting right there. <laughs> 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 no, I mean. It's staring him in the face. I... Yankees fan and and anyone who recalls 2004, the Yankees went up three to nothing on the Red Sox in the ALCS, and then the Red Sox won eight games in a row. So they they knocked out the Yankees. It's never happened before to to come back from from down three to nothing. And to do it with that rivalry. Y- yeah, right. Yeah. Oh my God. I, I, <laughs> um, His face just fell. <laughs> <laughs> but. I gotta say, like, I will never feel the kind of joy as a as a Yankees fan spoiled for championships that that Boston felt in two thousand four when they recorded that last out. So if you're a Red Sox guy and you can afford it, like a two thousand four Red Sox ring ending, what was it? Eighty six years of of suffering. Um, Heartache. And yeah, that belonged to their longtime groundskeeper. Oh right, I forgot about that. Yeah, and that's a cool story because um, he was he was really he was he was like part of the Red Sox family for like decades. So the players all knew him, and he actually drove. If you recall at the '99 All Star Game when Ted Williams comes out in the golf cart, and and like people in the stands are weeping yes. seeing him. And all of the players, like every single player, was just transfixed. It was like it, it was. And Williams' eyesight was failing, and so I think his name was Al Forrester. Yeah, he was describing it to Ted Williams. Oh wow! And they were good friends. In yeah. fact, on the road, Ted yeah. Williams would use his name as a pseudonym at right. hotels, oh, to... so people wouldn't uh, know he was checked in at the hotel. Yeah, yeah. So that connection to to Ted Williams and to you know, it was really probably the greatest day in the lives of millions of residents of, of New England. I, I remember that, like, people were going to, to cemeteries to hang out with yes. their... Tell them what happened. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, so many people lived and died without ever seeing it. So 2004 Red Sox ring, like, even though I'm a Yankees fan and even though that was absolutely painful to, to go <laughs> to go through that to see that slip away like oh one game okay we're still fine two games i don't know and then it's tied up like, no. <laughs> um but uh i you know i get it and, and that was a red sox team full of personalities too a yeah very memorable squad yeah yeah it was was that the year that um that that Pedro tackled, um, well, he didn't really tackle Zimmer. him. He threw yeah. him aside. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm not sure I'm if that was say he though. tackled him because that's more <laughs> Oh, that was uh, <laughs> quite the moment. But um, so while it's hard for me to say that a 2004 Red Sox ring is cool as a Yankees fan, it, it undeniably is. And uh, I I hope that that ends up on the, on the, on the finger or the, uh, on the mantle of, of somebody who – Spent a lot of years suffering before that finally happened. I hope it's not some... And Jonathan enjoyed your years of suffering. Some, yeah, <laughs> not, some, not some bandwagon guy. 
All right, we're going to give Tony a chance to talk about it. All right. So we've got the most current. Oh, we're doing. Yeah. Devon White, Gold Glove, six time Gold Glove winner. We're selling his collection. It's in the second. Um, I believe it's a seven time Gold Glove. Is it seven? Oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah. We Don't are sell also selling. Sure. I'm sorry. Sorry, Devon. <laughs> sorry, Devo. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> this is his first Gold Glove. I believe it is at 5,000 or 5,500 right now. Um, his collection's in session two, which closes tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Some incredible. Rings, awards, World bats, Series trophies, jerseys. the large format World Series yeah, trophies. Those are really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two of um, them. Yeah, exactly. He was one of the only guys who actually went out and spent the money to get one. He yeah. said a lot of his teammates didn't do that. But uh, one of the best fielding, fielding center fielders, I mean, of his oh, era, by, for sure. And just when I was talking to him, just the pride that he had or that he has about, you know, Making sure Puckett or, you know, Griffey Jr. didn't, didn't beat him out, you know. <laughs> it was very, very competitive. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, well, we've got two of his, of his gold gloves. We have one of his World Series rings as well. Um, such a personal item, especially from a guy who's known for his fielding. All right. I'm going to take it to basketball now. Um, <laughs> Thank you, TMZ. Very interesting story, yes. Uh, TMZ related, <laughs> Kardashian related even. These are 2009 and 2010 Los Angeles Lakers NBA championship rings presented to Lamar Odom and uh, his doomed romance with Khloe Kardashian. They had the reality TV show. That made him a household name. But as far as on the court, this is when he was at his finest. Lakers back-to-back titles. He was a very significant part of those teams and a very talented player, very sad what happened afterwards. And that's how these are coming into the market. He pawned both of these rings and never retrieved them. So they are now in the open market. Uh, we've got them estimated at $50,000 each. Both, they're separate lots. And um, very cool rings. They have a portrait of him on the yeah, side of the ring. Yeah. I've never seen that Is that before. the first time they ever did that on a I've never, I've never seen it before. Yeah. And and they're actually, like, very you can, rec- you can, re- yeah, you can <laughs> recognize them. It's, it's, it's we very sold well done. DJ Bengas, who was the backup on that team, that was the first time I ever saw that. Yes, yeah. you're right. And we very did. distinctive looking guy, and it looked exactly <laughs> like him. Um, but significant, one of the greatest franchises in any sport, the Los Angeles Lakers, championship rings from them, and um, we from a talking, name player as well. Yeah, yeah. Not just from, and of course a with the recent passing of Kobe Bryant, that that era of right. of Lakers. This is, is when Kobe. Surpassed Shaq, a lot of people think, in titles, certainly, mm-hmm. and uh, showed he could do it without Shaq, and this is that team. That, that was a fun team, too. Uh, it was, it was. Kobe and Powell and uh, Middle World Peace <laughs> and a lot of characters on that team. And and, and Phil Jackson, I mean, yes. as their coach. And as we were talking about with those 1920s Yankees rings, uh, this is the opposite end of the gaudiness factor yeah. right here. And doesn't uh, doesn't it spin in the? It does. Yeah. Uh, there's a light in this holder, and it spins. Uh, if we put the battery in it, which is not in right now, but you can if you win it. It's a pretty impressive display. It and, is. Um, yeah, the 2010 one says Sweet 16 on the side. It was their 16th title, and it weighs 69 grams. So, and these are size 11 and a half. He was uh, 6'11", so uh, <laughs> well, big guy, take that into note. Pinky rings for him. <laughs> <laughs> but very cool Lakers pieces here, and Tony's got one more ring we're going to talk about. I've got the most current Pittsburgh Steeler Super Bowl ring. This was uh, Tyrone Carter's, and uh, this has a 50, I think it's got like a $60,000 estimate on it. Uh, very gaudy. It's th- this Massive. was yeah. Yes. This was the one for the thumb is how they dubbed it after they won their uh, sixth uh, Super Bowl title. Uh, just an absolute stunning ring, and uh, from one of the players as well. And yeah. uh, that might be the first one we've ever sold f- from their most current Super Bowl win. It's a cool design. It is. Sure. Cool. Yeah, yeah. You know what? You, it, you'd logo. say it's like. It it is ostentatious, but somehow it's also yeah it, like Keeps it's it well under control. It's well bit. designed, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not mm-hmm. over the top. It's just gigantic. That classic it's, Steelers logo. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that one. Uh, I believe it's at fifty five thousand right now, and uh, the, uh, there's still some room for it. I, w- I think for for it to move. 
Jonathan, always a pleasure. When you Good to be us. here. <laughs> yeah. A ton of knowledge, and thank you for sharing it. Happy and to. And we're going to take a quick break. Uh, you can learn a little bit more about Heritage, and when we come back, we're going to talk some very rare and obscure cards with Pete Calderon. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Sadler and welcome to the Heritage Auction Search Tutorial, getting the most out of guided navigation. This tutorial will give you an understanding of how to navigate the HA.com website when searching for specific items. Let's get started. The best way to get started is by simply typing in a keyword on the Heritage homepage. Today we'll be looking for items from Muhammad Ali, including within all categories, all auctions, and buy now, and with the keywords featured in titles and descriptions. Let's hit the search button. I want to limit my search today to sports. I can further refine my search in sports categories to just baseball or boxing. I'm interested in boxing. This particular lot will be available in an upcoming Heritage Platinum Night Sports Collectibles auction. Another great feature of the Heritage website is the ability to do research by looking at items that have already sold. The same refined search features apply to our archives as well as our current items. In this case, let's look for a budget of say $101 to $1,000. What I'm really interested in is to see the highest price ever paid for a Muhammad Ali lot sold by Heritage Auctions. I can again access the filters and delete the parameters I had for the previous price range. And now I click on the Sort Results tab. This is a great feature that allows you to sort items from highest to lowest price when items were sold, even alphabetically. Today we're looking for the highest price first. We can see that there are several items and the page nicely lays out the items making each of them easy to view. Another great feature of the Heritage website is the ability to change the view. In addition to gallery mode, you also can change it to a list. If any of these items don't interest you, you can go back and create a want list with the keywords Muhammad Ali. You'll be notified anytime an Ali item comes up for sale. Now I want to start over and shift gears completely. I'm going to head up to the Start Over tab and click it. Today I'm looking for items that deal with Superman. Here's something eye-opening, an Andy Warhol Superman painting sold for nearly $150,000. If Superman isn't your thing, you can use the Start Over button and begin a new search for items that do interest you. With this tutorial and a little practice, you'll be breezing through HA.com and our over 40 different categories. Happy hunting! to 22-23 Lou Gehrig Game Use Side Written Bad is one of the two earliest Gehrig gamers known. Gehrig had enjoyed a brief late season debut with the 1923 World Championship team prior to his permanent call up. Hitting his first of 493 career home runs on September 27th. 18 days later, he'd sign an endorsement contract with Hilrick and Bradsby forever after receiving bats with his facsimile signature burnt into the barrel. The absence of that facsimile signature on the barrel of the offered lumber establishes this as one of only two known pre-endorsement models from the Iron Horse, placing the enormously important relic into the legend's youthful hands as either a member of the Columbia University team, the Hartford Senators, the New York Yankees, or possibly all three. Block-lettered bats were only issued by the H&B factory to athletes not under contract. Factory side writing on the barrel of the battle-scarred lumber reads 40 ounce Lou Gehrig 4-22-25, a date that falls just over a month short of the start of the Hall of Fame first baseman's legendary consecutive game streak. Its return on this date strongly suggests that at least some of the heavy use can be attributed to big league play. This historic war club, one of the most significant bats heritages ever have the privilege to present to the collecting community, is uncracked and coated in ball marks and cleat divots. A bit of grain checking on the back barrel speaks to thunderous power of a burly youngster on the brink of immortality. This 1922. And we're back. 
How about that? We got people walking right in front of the camera. It's a live working office, people, and it's auction night. Platinum night auctions closing tonight. It's a frenetic pace around here. The audience of hundreds, thank you for guys for joi joining us, and thank you for being so very quiet and respectful. We appreciate that. And we've got, let's do a time check. What's, Magnus, what time is it? 9.36. 9.36. So remember, you got to get your bids in before 10 p.m. in order to bid after 10 p.m. is the best way to explain it. 24 more minutes. And one person who, you know what? Tony's taking a uh, surprise, surprise food break here. Um, so it's just me and Pete. This is Pete Calderon, one of our card experts. Welcome, Pete. Thank you Thank for you joining us. Um, Pete's one of my favorite people in the department. He uh, wow. knows everything about cards, and especially he knows all the obscure, rare cards. You know, we talked about it earlier on the show even. We'll get something where, like, nobody's seen this before, and Pete's like, I've seen it. <laughs> I've, had a, I've had a couple of them come across my desk. No big deal. So, Pete, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And uh, let's get started right away. We've got some incredibly rare cards. What are you going to talk yep. about, Pete? Uh, the first card I've got is a very rare, but also one of the most unique baseball card issues Sorry. of the 20th century. Uh, it's a Eddie Collins Boston Garter card. And uh, these are uh, also some of the largest size cards ever produced. They were given away, uh, obviously, through men's clothing stores. But what's interesting about them is the theme of the set, which is basically baseball players sitting around in their shorts showing their up underwear. their Boston yeah, garters. <laughs> um, luckily for our audience at home, we didn't do a parody of this one. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it wasn't in, in talks, I'll tell you that. Yeah, but I mean, the lineup here, you know, you got all the greats of the era. Um, it's a little... Uh, <laughs> Seeing them in a, in a manner that you know you don't always anticipate it. Uh, <laughs> what do you see? You know. <laughs> and uh, this whole garter industry killed by one thing, elastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Took it out. Yeah. No, it's a really great set. We've got a few different, couple different examples in this auction. Plus, we have a really rare uh, display sign. From yes. This set. And we're going to talk about that which, one. In which a is second. which is really really cool. So. And that one, incredibly rare. That is the only great example? Uh, well, I believe it's the only one, or the only SGC, yeah, I believe, well, no, it is the only one, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, this is another, we talked about collecting being partly about bragging, and right there, you've got the only one, right there. You can, one of one. One of one. You can so. imagine the moms when they discover this card in Junior's bedroom throwing <laughs> this one out quickly. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't under the mattress. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. He went there. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> it's getting late. Yeah. DiMaggio, yeah, 480,000 right now. <laughs> Just got hit. So. Ooh, the uh, 41 play ball yes. is what we're talking about. Yep. I like those live updates, Tony. Keep them coming. 490. Wow. I'm going to go a little out of order here because we've got another card from that uh, same era. Again, the only one, uh, the, only, it, the only graded example. Uh, this one, unfortunately, has been skinned, but... Yeah, there it is. Oh, sorry about that. No, you're good. So this one has been skinned, but when it's the only one known, as they say, another, another phrase, beggars can't be choosers. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's a great pose. He's really getting dressed. <laughs> yeah, they got, yeah, yeah they're very, uh, oh, very wow. colorful. They got their suitcases ready. They're just not dressed yet when they were... The open window, <laughs> the, the open, game's going on behind window, them. Going it's on. Like, hold on, I'm tying uh -huh, my ass, Scott. The, I'll be the, there in a second. Getting the breeze flowing through <laughs> your garters. <laughs> oh, my. I mean, garters did help uh, in Bull Durham. Duke Lush, Duke Lush, yes. I believe. Yes, <laughs> Nailed it. That's one of those movies you almost have to watch every time it's on. Let's watch it. Turn it on. Oh, I love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk cards first. Okay. Again, another Boston Goddard card, but they redeem themselves. This is from their second issue, and this set is probably one of the most beautiful sets ever produced. Indeed. Um, there's a number of sets from the 20th century that, you know, are very nice, but they came back this year showing the players and... You know, full figure players, and he's still incorporating the garter just a little more creatively this year. Right, <laughs> smart way to do it. It really shows off what it is as opposed to what yes, it looks like. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So again, you know, no, there were just twelve players out of this set, but they're just so incredibly defined. Most of them, there's less than a handful 
Um, you know, obviously there's the Joe Jackson and Cobb in these sets, but anytime a collector has the opportunity to pick up one of these cards, they need to take advantage of it because you just never know when another one's going to come up. Yes. And this is a great collection uh, that we have yes. in this auction right here. Uh, I apologize. This one is Hall of Famer Johnny Evers. Uh, SGC Authentic because somebody just, you know, touched up a little color a little, little bit. But, again, um, it's the only graded example. So You just keep coming with those. Boy, uh, I know. Right well, I, as I said, it is one of the finest sets ever produced. And we're very lucky for this auction because, you know, you just don't get the opportunity to... Uh, um, usually have so many examples. So this one is Larry Doyle. Uh, again, maybe not most popular player, you know, household name, but again, one of the elite 12 that made it to this set. And again, you know, just beautiful colors, beautiful design, and that, that ultimate combination of having something that no one else, you know, is going to have because right. there's just... I think this one, I think this one, there's a whole whopping two of them known. So <laughs> this, this wow. One's common. Unbelievable. Wow. 537,500 for the DiMaggio. Play ball. Yeah. One, the only PSA 10. Spirited bra bidding. More bragging rights right there. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. I promise, folks, this is the last one. <laughs> <laughs> no, keep going. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Can't this stop, won't great. stop, I believe, P. Diddy would say. <laughs> Oh, this one's really common. There's only three of there's three of these known. So. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not interesting. Go back and get something that's a little more limited, please. He's got but one. Again, Buck, <laughs> Herz Buck Herzog. He was the last player chosen uh, on the roster for this set. And again, just you know, it, it's so incredibly rare. There's just beautiful cards. Good action. You shot. just never, yeah, the in action poses. And you just and all of them are full figures. Um, you just never get tired of seeing them. Yeah. Well, if you have Boston Garters, let us know. We're not tired of them. So we'll take more of them for sure. Pete will bring them on our next show, right? Exactly. And now, this is the aforementioned. Pete mentioned it momentarily. There we go. It's backwards. This is a 1912 Boston Garter advertising display sign. And you've got Eddie Collins, who we just saw his 1939 Hall of Fame watch fob, and Hal Chase. And this is remarkably rare. Um, it's two cards, each appearing in as-issued condition, <coughs> but for the period glue on the back. And Dead Ball Era Superstars. Um, and wow, the display. To have the display, we were talking about how rare the cards are, but to the have the store advertising display. store display. If you buy one or all of those Boston Garter cards, you got to get this to go with it. Oh, absolutely. Oh, could you I mean, imagine that? Absolutely. Great? Yeah, unquestionably one of the most exciting ad pieces to cross our desks, and that's saying a lot. Almost exists by mistake. I mean, who? Why? Why would you save something like that unless you right. just little kids saw the sign and maybe the promotion was it over, took it out of the window, he and loved garters. Loved garters. <laughs> <laughs> he says, "I'll hold on to that." Uh, each of these cards would be worth tens of thousands of dollars, <laughs> and here they are together on a sign. So very cool piece, very rare. And I believe you have something pretty rare over there as well. Oh, am I up again? Ooh, you have the floor. <laughs> this is incredibly rare, and this is a really, just, just not, again, a, a phenomenal piece. This is uh, Cantania uh, Cigarettes issued two sets of cards. Uh, their first series was full-color cards, only a dozen players. Second series, those featured any, the entire, entire league. Uh, they were black and white cards. There's over 200 cards in the set. For years, there we had hobby had no idea exactly what was in the set because there, there was no checklist, and these are such obscure Pete players. Know, nobody knows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you are too kind. <laughs> <laughs> what I don't know though is why isn't this getting more bids? Because this is just an incredible item. I, I don't want to open it up again because the, the binding, which is original, it's very fragile. But on the inside, but we um, have it all imaged on our website. Yes, all the all the pages so are imaged on, on our it's website. It's got those great vintage portraits. It's all, all the cards in the set. Um, the first page is a uh, uh, H.E. Thompson card, which a uh, gentleman is dressed just like Uncle Sam. Right. So we're assuming that would maybe the, for the inspiration <laughs> for the future uh, future war poster. But there's so few of those cards, um, and this album was a, uh, was advertised. Um, for whatever reason, this is only the second one that I'm aware of. Wow. And it's just such such a neat piece. First one sold for $30,000, so we're hoping for And it's got every like card result. from that series. All, all the cards all pictured minor, on the page. minor leaguers. Wow. These are all minor leaguers, all southern leaguers. 
just players that if it were not for this piece and these cards, history would just completely have forgotten about them. Right. Um, there's no Joe Jackson in the set. There's no Babe Ruth and Gehrig and any of those any of the famous players. There are a few that did make Major League Baseball, but nobody you know really you know Hall of Fame caliber. Right. But uh, and it's just such a neat piece that that happened to survive. And you know pieces like this, it's paper. They wear. It's the South. You have environmental issues. You have humidity and rain and things like that. To have something that, that has survived this nice with the original binding, yeah. no tears, repairs, and, you know, it's got a little bit of, you know, so soiling, but, you know. One guy out there has yes. one of these. One and person somebody has else one of these, is yes. going to be able to say tonight. they have second, it tonight. Second opportunity, yes. And it's just one of those really obscure pieces that you just almost never see, so. Speaking of rare, we use that here. word a lot. Of I time know. Now. Gosh, uh, that's what Platinum Knight's all about. Uh, we got Tony's rare talents over here, and then we've got this, which is a 1914E24 <coughs> Texas Tommy Christy Matthewson Type Two. Yep. <laughs> uh, I saw Texas in there, and I had to pull this out. I'd never heard of this. I'd never seen this card before. <laughs> that's one of the great things about working at Heritage is you get you to see, see things, things nobody knows about. And this is one set that is steeped in mystery. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that, I mean, few collectors have even know this set exists or have seen one. And we know that they came from candy bars bearing the Texas Tommy name produced by the Cardinet Candy Company. Company yep. And that's it. That's all we know. That's all anybody knows. And even that is a relatively recent discovery. For years, everybody just thought Texas Tommy was the, maybe the, the company. Right. It turns out that's actually the, the brand made by a... But made by the candy company. And this one's Christy Mathewson. There's only two examples mm -hmm. of wow. the Mathewson known, and this is by far the superior example. Yeah. Um, virtually no trading card is less likely to reappear on the auction block than this one. So if you want it, you got to get it tonight. This is the real photo format, full figure of Mathewson right there. And uh, it's an SGC 20. The full graded population of all player representations from this Type 2 set, 10. Wow. So here is the finest Mathewson you could have right here. So that is unbelievable. And if you're in Texas, yeah. you gotta, better <laughs> be bidding on check this. Check those attics, check those basements. You know? <laughs> 95000 for the Brett right now, and the Boston Garter Collins just got hit because of Pete, and so did Johnny Evers. Nice. Not not yeah, not to you know give you a big head or anything. Oh yeah, no, no. you know. That, that, there you I, go. This one's that, for you, I believe. Yes. That, that might have been me, so I'm have to cancel that. <laughs> 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 nice. Okay, what uh, one of the one of the great things about this hobby are the background stories that we got. So this is just a, uh, one of a M116 Sporting Life card of Honus Wagner, uh, the pastel background. Uh, graded uh, PSA 4.5, really good looking card. It's got little minor faults, so it's not like it's mint condition. But what's great about this card is that it survived a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> the family. The we don't family say that, that often enough. No, yeah, exactly. yeah. The, the family that had this collection um, held on to it. It was back in the 80s. It was a tornado that uh, destroyed the family house. Uh, luckily, nobody was was uh, seriously injured or or, or killed. But the home home was completely destroyed, and I believe he said these cards were found in a little little package in a windowsill. And yeah. ultimately, um, they have thirty five cards. Uh, there was a couple of there's more M one sixteens coming up in our our April auction from this collection, and all the lot pages refer to the, to this story. Um, there's some really there's some rare T two O sixes, and what was amazing about the T two O sixes, all of them were Hindu tobacco brands, which are really rare. So it was just a, a niche thing. You have to have five cards and five rare backs. You, you gotta love that. Yeah. But the most interesting thing are, are the the fact that you know they survived. You know, being and you know we've seen cards in every condition from mint to don't even want to touch them, and the fact that these cards survived so nicely and they survived the tornado and the rain and the wind and the damage and everything. Yes. To to be able to uh, and it was been passed down through the family. Now the family is making them available. There you go. Very cool. Great backstory to that one. Yeah. That got really ten cool. minutes Keep to, to get your bids in. Ten, ten minutes, minutes uh -oh. left before extended bidding begins. So that's when the stuff begins. we're talking about, <coughs> talking about, and you want to bid on it, you got to bid right now to be able to be eligible for extended bidding. 
Yes, this one, um, again, following that theme of rarity that we are, are following tonight, <laughs> uh, People's Tobacco Company was based out of New Orleans. Um, their cards came out uh, kind of after the T206 era, but they only were circulated in the South. Um, the other major difference is the card stock that they use is actually, it's almost like paper, and it's very fragile. When cards are found, they're basically in this condition, and collectors don't care one bit because so few of them are actually out there. Um, there's a couple different brands. This one is a Mino Cigarettes, very tough. Uh, Honus Wagner, um, his fielding pose that you expect to see in other candy cards, you're just not going to see that in in this brand very well. Then you know, even though it's got some, it's got creasing and wear and everything, it's still got good eye appeal, and it, it's just amazing that these, especially in the in the South with you know hurricanes and tornadoes, you know the fact that these you know st still exist just you know, it, it's amazing, and this is, we've got this one and a couple of cotton tobaccos coming up, so there's a nice selection of these coming up in the, this auction and the next one. Very nice, and I like this one a lot. This is a 1895 N300 Mayo's Kid Nichols, and this Kid is a Nichols. PSA 8, <coughs> Pop 1, none higher. So this is one of the finest Kid Nichols baseball cards ever to surface, and one of the finest from the N300 set ever mm -hmm. we've ever encountered it's the highest graded example in the hobby right here great picture it is i great love picture. the picture here that uniform um i think we should have work uniforms that look like these i've been Let lobbying for that oh the vertical yeah. absolutely <laughs> everybody in for that do we have to uh, wash them all the time though do we have to, like in baseball do you have, you i mean Nara does your laundry what are you <laughs> And so, we can wear shorts and use our, and wear our Boston Guard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of just two cards graded near mint to mint for this entire series, and it's the finest nickels from a population of just twenty one. So incredibly hard to come by, and it's just cool looking. That's that's why I pulled it out. Yeah, I love this one. George it's, bred a hundred thousand right now. There it's, we go. It's it's a great set too because that set came out right between. The 1887 Old Judge cards and the 1903 Bryce Williams. It was. It's like the only set of cards that came out in that era. It was like a little so, oasis. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What did we All right, one on? more from Pete. I pulled for this one. You cool. did. I did. <laughs> 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 Beautiful. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. Um, very few things are more American than than Cracker Jack. Um, apple pie? It, it, apple pie and <laughs> Chevrolet are the other two. Oh, Chevrolet. <laughs> I throw that out there. Yeah, exactly. We, we do get royalties, right? I <laughs> yeah, hope so. Of course. We are now. <laughs> <laughs> but in 1914 and 1915, Cracker Jack issued baseball cards. Um, the 1914 set is incredibly tough to find in high grade because they came right in the boxes with the Cracker Jack. No wax paper, no cardboard. Mm -hmm. Just oh, right, they just right there, just right there in the box. Really? Yes. So oh, um, almost my. all of them are very, very heavily stained. What's nice with 1915 is that you could still get the cards in the box, or for a price, you could order a complete set of cards from the company. So for 1915, there are more high grade examples known, and it's it, it really is a pleasure that 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 happened because to see these cards in high grade, they're just incredibly impressive. And then when you realize that they're made from, you know, just thin textured paper, the fact that they've survived in such hard, you know, good condition is, is the only reason is because they were ordered from the company and they didn't get packaged and shipped and traded and everything, you know. And there was a specially designed album that Cracker Jack made that you could get as well. But, uh, and it's just, a, it's just a beautiful set and it's always had a, such a strong following. Um, this one's graded PSA, PSA 9. Um, wow. Just, um... And it just, I just thought it was a really cool card, beautiful colors. And it's one of the very few sets to feature uh, cards from the Federal League. It oh. only existed really? in 1914 and 15. So. Okay. And, you know, some players were let back into Major League Baseball, but a lot of these guys, when they jump ship, that was the end of That was it. Yeah, yeah, they were blackballed. Yeah. But, no, it, it's, it's interesting to have those, uh, you know, just a part of baseball, almost a lost part of baseball yeah. history. Yeah. And yet, I didn't know you, that they made Here you have them. That's very cool. Outstanding. Great stuff, as always, Pete. A wealth of Much knowledge. Pretty. He is. He is. I don't know how I get stuck doing this. I just came back for a marker. <laughs> <laughs> we just pull him in. He just he came back for a so marker. So time check. What time we got here, Tony? We have five minutes left. Five we minutes. We're going to take a very quick break. 
And then we're going to come back with uh, Jason Simmons. We're going to talk about provenance pieces. Ooh. And we have some very significant Leroy Neiman paintings in the auction. And take a look. Hello. Welcome to the joy of painting. Today we've got a very special treat. We're doing an homage to one of my favorite artists, a fantastic individual, Mr. Leroy Neiman, with an outstanding mustache and unparalleled painting skills. As you can see, we've got three of his masterworks, one of Lou Alcindor, one of the 1971 fight of the century between Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier, and another of Bob Devaney and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. So today, we're gonna do our own little Leroy Neiman painting. If you've never joined us before, grab your brushes and your paint and your canvas, and let's have a little fun. The most important thing about Leroy Neiman paintings is the freedom, the expression. There's no mistakes here. We're just having fun. Just let it flow through you. Leroy Neiman is famous for the free-flowing painting, the true emotion you can see in his paintings evident in all three of these beautiful examples. Me, I'm just gonna let it go. See what happens. Now, this painting of Lou Alcindor was before he became Kareem Abdul-Jabbar when he was with the Milwaukee Bucks. And the fight of the century, we all remember that one, of course. When Muhammad Ali shocked the world. And thinking about it, I just can't help but smile. And Nebraska had an amazing winning tradition. I think we're all familiar with that. Leroy Neiman was known for many things, but mostly sports art and capturing the emotion. We all just feel so happy when we watch sporting events, don't we? And paintings of them is exactly the same. As most of you notice with Leroy Neiman's work, the backgrounds and the sides are just full of emotions. See me some happy little freedom brush strokes right here. Be in your own world. Do your own thing. Now, not everyone can paint as great as Leroy Neiman. I know I can. I do the best I can and so should you. But, if you'd love to have your own Leroy Neiman, and who wouldn't, you can get one tonight in Heritage's Platinum Auction. All it takes is one winning bid. Anyone can do it, even you. In honor of Muhammad Ali, one of my favorite pugilists, we'll put a happy little butterfly right here. And then over here, a happy little bee. Don't forget the stinger. And if you're out there bidding, I'd love to see some of your bids. Go on and send them in to us. Now, there we go. Another masterpiece. I hope you finished your masterpiece too. I'd love to see it if you did. And to all y'all, happy bidding. But it's not time to relax. It's 10 p.m. Central Time. Extended bidding has begun. If you had bid on items previously, the 30-minute...
countdown clock has started, <clears throat> and you can bid right now. It will reset every time someone bids on it. So if you didn't bid on items, you can still follow along. We're going to be talking about them. And one important thing for collectors and another great layer of authentication is provenance. So over here on our right is Jason Simmons. He wears a lot of hats. I was going to say he does everything. It's hard to hold, hold your applause. <laughs> the crowd has been very quiet. Wow. Very quiet. And we They've waited for this moment. <laughs> Mike, I gotta say, right as you said that, I thought of a genius line that we should be using. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your bids are? <laughs> oh, not bad. Ah! Not bad. Oh! Like, anyone who's younger than us out there is saying, what? Is yeah, that right. from something? <laughs> <laughs> is that? Yeah, that's not important. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I thought I'd take a little bit of a different angle uh, when it comes to uh, uh, discussing a theme and, and collecting and all that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of collectors, myself included, love the backstory of, of where items come from. It's nice to know when you can take it directly from, whether it's a family or you know any sort of proof that tells you exactly where it came from to your hands. Uh, it just makes it a little more secure, a little more uh, uh, firm in your bidding and stuff. So picked out a whole bunch of great items here. Uh, first one being the uh, luckiest man speech. This is Lou Gehrig's uh, retirement, July 4th, 1939. Uh, phenomenal ticket on its own, right? So this one, uh, they're only eight graded by PSA in the world. Really? Uh, yeah, only a low eight number. total, right? Yeah. So there aren't that many out there to begin with. This is the highest graded. It's a four. It looks phenomenal. It's, it does. It's, it's in pristine condition. Uh, but linking it back to provenance, what to me makes it stand out even more is that it's got the original mailer as well. Uh, so this came. It yeah, it came from the Baltimore this. area. Uh, the consigners, I think grandfather, actually sent out to buy these tickets, you know, s sent out, and this is, he got his tickets, he got his envelope, and he got a little, he knew it was like a voucher. Lou Gehrig day, I, day, boy, you know, or he, he could, he could sure pick them, I'll say that, <laughs> and I love the envelope, and look at the back of yeah, it, too, it's, it's got, got the, the centennial. Which you see wow. in, the, you know, Gehrig's speech, you see that patch right there from yes. that angle, it's just. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's the best of the best. Right. And yeah, there's just, the there's, you would think there. people would have kept those tickets. Right. And I, it's surprising yeah, that, that people, I mean, it was such a noteworthy event, and there's just none of them out there. Right. And collecting world just wasn't where it is now. Yeah, Nobody really exactly. Thought like, you know, it was neat. I'm sure people kept it in their drawers for decades. Yep. And then they eventually and they just move got, or something. Yeah, like, just I don't got thrown this. away things somewhere. Get, yeah, what do I need that for? Yeah. Right. I remember the speech. <laughs> I remember, <It's> fine. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. I yeah. have the memories. They weren't hoarders like us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's an outstanding <clears throat> item right there. Those ticket alone, but like I said, the provenance uh, takes it to that, that extra envelope level alone. That envelope is incredible. I know, I know. And again, not to mention it's the highest graded out there. <laughs> yeah. Just another layer. <laughs> that hurt. Yeah. All right, let's talk about that uh, ring. Doing the Patriots ring? Yeah, that's right. Nice. Yeah, so speaking of provenance, this comes directly from uh, the family. So this was issued to the scout. Uh, his name is Jake Hallam. Uh, the actual Patriot scout. So That is a serious box. Yeah, no, for <laughs> ring. heavy, too. I was a little surprised. Yeah. Either. I'm getting weaker. <laughs> Can't uh, it be both? Anyway, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy got there. Jake Hallam was uh, one of the Patriot <coughs> Scouts. Got there in 2000. And of course, they win their first Super Bowl of their unquestionable greatest dynasty in, in, uh, in football. Yes. Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> With the asterisk of they play uh, against some bad competition all year. But aside right. from that. <laughs> Other than that. <laughs> Shots fired. Yeah, no, no, no. Jets fans. Uh, it's <laughs> Dolphins <laughs> fans. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, this comes. This guy upgraded his ring, right? So everybody, you know, staff has the option to upgrade to the player-style ring. He did that. You know, it's, wow. it's got the full display case. It's got, you know, a letter from him, the whole deal. So uh, it's a it's a beautiful ring to begin with. The first one of the dynasty, and like I said, comes directly from the family of the scout, too. There's no, never sold before, never any of that kind of stuff. Fresh so, to the hobby, as we yeah, say. Yep. Estimate on that's 30000 and it should get every bit of that. It's a beautiful. We've got Lee Harvey Oswald's last check is at 57500 right wow. now. Wow. That is incredible. Yeah. So we don't do just sports either, That's guys. Right. We 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 We're gonna yeah. go celebrate at Dealey Plaza. Just down the street. Wow. Just down the street. <laughs> Too soon. Uh, all right. So another great piece with provenance here. This is the 1936 Berlin Summer Olympics gold medal. 
And what's significant about this is this was the first time that basketball was a medal sport at the Olympics. Uh, very the famous 36 Olympics. it was. The wow. 36 Olympics in Berlin. Jesse Owens had a lot of success. But there was 23 teams from four continents competing in basketball. It's the first year that it was a medal event. It was the largest tournament of the team competitions. And I guess the Germans weren't very familiar with how basketball was played. The tournament was played outside. And it was <laughs> dirt courts. Yeah. What? Yes. So that's tough enough. But then the gold medal game, they play, Americans played the Canadians. And it was raining during right. the game. So it became a sloppy mess. You could not dribble. It was all about passing. And America ended up winning. They were the taller team. So they had the advantage just, just had the throwing it over. Head, yeah. Final score, 19-8. to eight. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, so a real thriller. Yeah. And no shot clock either, guys. Uh, yeah. So James Naismith made the trip for it being the first time that it was a medal. Basketball is a medal sport. He awarded the gold medal. This one was awarded to team cap- captain Bill Wheatley, mm-hmm. and it comes directly from his family. He was the guy on the medal stand as well. Yep. He was the guy on the medal stand. A lot of people know when it's a team event, they'll have one representative. So it was the first <clears throat> time basketball was in the Olympics. This is the first gold medal, and it was the first one awarded. All the team members got one, but this is the first, the first one. one that actually and went. Naismith gave it to him. Um, so literally the first basketball Olympic gold medal right here. Yeah. And for a period it was displayed in the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame, this medal was. Wow. And now, tonight, somebody can win now it let's and hear. display it. We have so many museum pieces, this is actually literally true. Right, it was was already a museum piece. (laughs) Uh, Any Olympic gold medal is a fantastic piece, but this one has that great backstory to it. story, yeah, direct, like you said. Love to see video of that uh, (laughs) championship game. I wonder if Naismith was mad, because, I mean, he's from Canada, isn't he? True. That's right. Yeah, that must have been a... Bittersweet. That's yes. 19 to, what was it? 19 to 8? 19, 19 to 8. eight. Wow. <laughs> that's, uh, that's like the first 30 seconds of an NBA game. <laughs> 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 All right, Tony, you've got a great provenance championship piece with that Marlins ring. Right? Yes, this came, this comes directly from Devon White. Uh, he was, of course, part of two championships with the Blue Jays. But many people might forget he also won a World Series with the Florida Marlins in 1997. Their oh, first. Their first, yes. I think, believe they started in 93, was, was their first year um, in existence. And here is his ring consigned directly from box. Devon White with his name engraved on the inside. I don't know if we can get it up close to that. We may not be able to. But uh, a little, a simple design. Mm-hmm. Um, the baseball rings uh, are a little more, you know, they're not quite as gaudy, especially right. during this time period. Right. And the Marlins, for being a relatively newer team, yeah. do have two World Series titles. So, right. uh, yeah. you know, um, and White gave them a veteran presence. Uh, they, they went out and spent some big, big money. Gary Sheffield, Bobby right. Bonilla, they That's went right. out. Yeah, they went out and got a lot of good veterans, and Devon White was one of them. And this was, this is, was I guess, his ring from 1997. So yeah. significant player on that team. He so was, he was, he really was. Yeah, when they won, they went all in. They uh, did. On the roster. And then when they, and, they broke still it up, surprised people too. They like, broke they, it up yeah. quickly. They yeah. broke yeah. it up they really. <laughs> I mean, it was <laughs> <laughs> two, uh, two World Series. It's more than my a team has. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wasn't even going to say it, but I might as well. A lot of things moving. Larry Zonka, 10,500. Yeah. Um, Joe DiMaggio, Jersey, 160. Cobb oh, nice. Bat, 175. Oh, talk about a great just, item. I mean, just uh, a yeah. lot of bids coming in. So extended bidding's going on. This is when people really get serious. Oh, this is the fun part. Yep. It's real competitive. But let's team. talk about a uh, local star here. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very cool piece. Um, Which is performing these, very well right now. A lot of yeah. these game-worn that, jerseys we're talking about, you probably were not around to watch the athlete wear that jersey. Right. But significantly, <laughs> you might have seen this one. Yeah. Yeah, you only hear stories about most of these guys and read about them uh, uh, in our beautiful auction write-ups that Tony Gizzi does. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, but, yeah, this guy you can watch uh, watch on TV right now. So, Rookie of the Year this particular year. Very well-known name. <laughs> 
or 77. You know the story about why he wears 77? I do I not know. Got taken from Dwight Powell, which he had really? ample reason. Yeah. Well, so Luca kind of tried to play the card of, you know, I'm, I'm the star. Let me, but he had reason relating to family. Yeah. I don't want to <laughs> bring the room down, but <laughs> yeah. it was related to his mom passed away. Oh, yeah. so anyway, yeah, the there, audience is good, shuffling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, okay. Anyway, so Luca, being a good guy, said, that's fine. I'll take 77. So anyway. Aside from that, the story of this actual jersey itself is amazing. If you look at, it, at the lot description online, it's got the video and the whole thing. Uh, so it shows Luca, you know, driving the hole, trying to beat. Uh, it's in. Um, oh God, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, uh, <sighs> playing against the Warriors. Warrior uh, Arena. No, 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 no it was actual, home game, wasn't uh, it? The, oh, the, I think it was a home game. Uh, Draymond. Yes. Draymond, Draymond Green. Green. Yeah, so he drives the hole, trying to get a layup in. Draymond swats him. Luca, you know, going full speed, crashes into this kid in the you know front row at ten year old Arena. kid. Yeah, the kid uh, was kind of shaking too. You could he, he was he was, but he was tough. Like he took the hit and kind of got back up and was just yeah, like really. <laughs> but he wasn't crying. He wasn't you know. I would have been. He didn't try to push Luca. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but again, back to Luca being a good guy. He stayed with him. You know, of course the play goes down the other end of the court instead of following Luca stays right there with the kid and makes sure he's okay and pats him on the head and all this kind of stuff and then beyond that he comes out after the game takes the jersey off of his back talks to the kid signs the jersey gives it to him sticks around chats with him all this kind of stuff all of it's filmed on uh the the twitter feed that we found in the website was uh, through fox sports but anyway all documented on our website and everywhere else and you know all sorts of articles and stuff written about it so the kid contacts us directly this is and great. says I was given this jersey uh, I'm a big fan but I think I probably ought to save money for my college fund <laughs> oh, smart kid Lord. I remembered seeing the highlight in the video I, I remember seeing it yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, talk about a great story um, snappy dresser too I like yeah, the he's suspenders, good he, was, suspenders he was wearing yeah. there yeah he was happy as could be at the end of the game, too. You see a huge smile. So uh, He's going to be happy after this auction ends. Exactly, yeah. Because yeah. he is. Yeah, we're already over the estimate on that. I mean, talk about a career that's got uh, uh, room to move, man. He's in yes. his second year. and Only uh, 20 years old. Yeah. Oh, Very yeah. few of his rookie season jerseys have come out. Yep. Only so a right. great opportunity. Before, right. and, yeah. Yeah. There hasn't been hardly anything. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. So. All right, Tony, why don't you talk about this bad boy here? I sh we showed everybody the Hank Aaron rookie cap. Well, this was worn from night, I believe it was 54 to 56. Uh, what makes this thing stand out, it makes it really collectible. It's got Hank Aaron's name and size on the inside. Um, one, of the, one, of, one of the earlier hats from his career, uh, Again, this came from the people who used to launder the uniforms, yeah. and it just stayed in a family for so long. It's, it stayed there for decades on end, right. and uh, this is this is reaching the auction block for the first time. And so the ta I, I, hopefully I didn't miss this. You, did you mention the tagging in it is from when they were in Boston? Nope, that was the the rookie hat. The oh, rookie hat right? was oh, okay. the Horace uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Partridge. Oh, fault. Where yeah. th this is Wilson, but just okay. the just the embroidery here. Yeah. Is yeah. uh, you know really makes this thing stand out, yeah. and you don't really see a lot of. It's hard to find Aaron stuff, and uh, especially from that from this time period, you know when he was, oh, I mean in Milwaukee, <laughs> and they were the biggest thing in town yeah. until they left for Atlanta. Until you came around. <laughs> until yeah, <laughs> <laughs> then they started I'll losing. Take that off your hands. But uh, beautiful Hank Aaron cap, and uh, I believe it has a ten thousand dollar estimate on it. Nice. What do you got in front of you there, James? Yeah, this is. Talk about That's good. gone up quite a bit. No, that's, yeah, yes, and, yes. Oh boy, talk about deservingly so. The that's beautiful. Trophy alone, I, if I remember right, we looked this up, had uh, uh, our silver department give us an appraisal value just on the silver value, and it was $40,000 alone, not with the... Not with the collectible. Yeah, the collectible nature of it as well. Um, so, yeah, this is a Preakness trophy from 96. Again, the theme here is, uh, comes directly from the family. Uh, passed down. So the uh, the the owner of the horse was Georgia Hoffman. Um, she didn't have any children of her own, but this was uh, she passed this down to her niece, who was a big you know involved in, oh, in uh, training and, and raising horses and stuff like that as well. So uh, yeah, the, the story of the horse itself. They uh, this was a track record until they came back later and gave Secretariat a lower time. What? Yeah. 
Wow. Weird thing, so, uh-huh. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. But um, <laughs> so yeah, Sport of Kings, race, but, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they want somebody knocking off secretary. <laughs> Jeez. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, it comes directly from that family line as well. Uh, just a beautiful trophy. This is only the second one ever offered at a public auction before. I was gonna say, speaking of they Sport of Kings, yeah. uh, most of the people who own horses. Yep. They've got a trophy case, and mm-hmm. they don't. They don't They're need, not going to let it go. It. Yeah, yeah. You don't see triple crown trophies coming around <laughs> directly right. from the family. Yeah, that's a bragging piece, right? There. <laughs> Absolutely, it's amazing. You don't have to buy a horse. I mean, you don't have to train a horse. <laughs> They're beautiful animals, but they let's be honest, they smell. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you get the trophy right here. No muss, no fuss. Right. No muss. No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It'll be a centerpiece, that's for sure. <laughs> Right. Ty, Ty Cobb, bat, on, bat off shoulder, 230000 right now. Wow. What's the Talked about at that? the top of the show. Uh, that's the nine. Wow. PSA nine. Damn. Campanella, 65000 So Talking about backstories, that was the consigner forgot he had it. Yes. Didn't this know he is, had yeah. It. yeah. And wow. Derek and Tony got to tell him that he was sitting on quite a fortune. Wow. Derek was like a little kid at Christmas. <laughs> you should have seen he was just as... Kind of I've never seen his eyes get like so yeah. big. I mean, yeah, it was, and shout out to Derek. Hope you're doing all right. Hope you're feeling Derek. better, Derek. And speaking of trophies, Tony, let's talk about this large format trophy. So we've got Devon White's um, standard format World Series trophies, but the players did have an option if they wanted to get a large, true size Right. The, the one, the ones that the uh, teams got, and uh, he opted both years in '92 and '93 to get the large format trophy, which is being offered both right now at fifteen thousand. Um, when I talked to to Devo about it, he said he like you guys are close friends. Oh yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I call him Devo. My God, we gotta be like this, right? No, but um, he said that he he checked with a lot of his teammates and nobody got him. Hmm. So he was one of the few guys that opted to get the large format version of it. Which means yeah. he's one of the few out there that exists. Exactly, yeah. yep. The only other one I could find was a, I think it was a Diamondbacks, and we sold it for like 30000 about five or six years ago. Yeah. So uh, that will end tomorrow night, session two, and uh, a lot of his stuff is starting to move. Right now, you're starting to see the bids come in. Um, and we're also seeing a lot of bids coming in right now for session one. And, uh, wow, the Preakness, 26000 right now. Is it good? So, good, good. Yep, yep. Wow. that's on the move up. With that $40,000 in silver <laughs> out there. <laughs> well, yeah, right. yeah, Jason. Maybe very I am interested in horse racing. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it does not get melted down. It's pretty beautiful. <laughs> right, it's too pretty for that, but it's geez, got, yeah. oh, it's The value just... will appreciate if there you, you leave it intact. <laughs> Yes. Speaking of appreciating, let's do that Simmons ring right there. Oh, yeah. Well, good word for it. Because the more I read about this guy, the more I realize how underappreciated he is. From You're Milwaukee. In, any relation? I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could explain that. Yeah, so this does come directly from the family. It's not my family. <laughs> that doesn't mean it's me, I promise. Uh, so, yeah, you know, it, talk about. Not as uh, gaudy as the uh, the yes, exactly. Patriots ring that we showed a minute ago, but uh, it is a fantastic ring on its own. Uh, but more importantly, yes, I started looking up. Well, of course, you know everybody, any real baseball fan knows uh, who Al Simmons is and knows about uh, you know Connie Mack and the and dynasty. The, uh, yeah, the athletics from from back then. So. I looked up his stats just out of curiosity. From 20, I found this really interesting. Uh, he started in 24. Next nine years, think about who all played during that time. He led the league and during his nine years, led the league in hits, in doubles, in RBIs. Over that nine-year span, he was, uh, or I'm sorry, he was second in RBIs and fourth in home runs. Wow. Behind Ruth Gehrig and uh, That's Hot crazy. Works. Wow. That's it. Every one of those categories for those nine it's years. Far underrated. And right, yeah. yeah. You name all those other people. Is know, it like, because because they had Fox and all those guys? Right, yeah. You they think or the, Collins yeah, and they Connie? Got the fame they got all the. But I mean, he was just an absolute hoss in that lineup. Mm-hmm. Really mm-hmm. drove him. Mm-hmm. So this was the first championship that uh, that he won. He won 
They won back to back in 2019. Right. Yeah. This is the first championship that he won. I mean, it shows signs of wear too. I guarantee he was proud of this thing and wore this. Sure. <laughs> quite That's what a bit. I like on the rings when you can tell yeah. that they were wearing it right. around. Absolutely. And proud again, of it. coming directly from the family. There's no. Yeah. It wasn't ever sold before. It wasn't. You know. There's there's nothing else going on with it. It comes from from his hands to whoever wants to bid on it. <laughs> oh, and you're not related, right? No, I wish. It would still be at my house. Are you sure? <laughs> like Ancestry.com? Yeah. Okay, okay. I was just, I'm just trying to think of options. Yeah. Cobb 270 right now. Wow. All right, and up next, your Yankees item over there. Jim Taylor, 30,000. Wow, that just took a... Oh, the Jim Taylor jersey yeah, that Chris 5, Barrett talked about yeah. earlier. Beautiful example. Yes, he must is. be excited back there. I hear him yelling. It's probably about Oh, can that. you hear him? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this lot actually steps out of line with my theme, but I just felt it was underappreciated <laughs> in this auction. A lot. This is one in session two, attention. so you can still bid on this that. Is tomorrow, yeah. Session one is an extended bidding right now, but session two you can bid freely, and extended bidding for that begins tomorrow at 10 p.m. Central Time. So this is, everybody knows the core four of the Yankees. Uh, Jonathan definitely knows. Boy. So this is a group of four game used and signed baseballs uh, from most of them are from their actual last game or oh, like Andy Pettit since his uh, uh, or I guess this is Posadas. This is his uh, his last hit, last home run, RBIs, all that kind of stuff. So it was you know last good performance. Uh, Jeter's, or you know, this was back when Steiner was doing the authentication for all them and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so they numbered them, right? So they only did 18. Jeter's last game ever played, uh, and he signed it with the inscription, last game. Wow. This bowl alone sold uh, in another auction, not this particular one, but another one of those 18 sold for, I think, 9000 in a separate auction on its own. Wow. It, there's a reserve on this lot at 6000 Again, this ball alone, Jeter's last game ever played, is worth more than by far. And noting it himself. Yeah, yes, it's good no problem. Problem. Self-authentication. Right it's got MLB authentication. It's got Steiner authentication. It's got everything. And everybody knows exactly how involved all these guys were. Same thing. Uh, Mariano Rivera's last game pitched, September 26th in uh, 2013. He, they numbered him again. This is number 18 of 24. There are only 24 of them out there. Wow. This was his last game pitch. This ball alone sold for, I think, three or 4000 at that time. So, wow. high value in this lot. And then, of course, you throw in Pettit as well, his last home win at, at Yankee Stadium there. Um, yeah, like I said. I mean, what are the odds of great. four guys oh. being, you know, right. staying together time. for yes. that long of a period of time and winning? Exactly. Like that. It's, right. it's so right. hard for, for teams to keep one or two guys These to days, keep yeah. four. Absolutely. It's... Yep. And speaking of sign balls with provenance, this one right here caught my eye. This is a 1961 Ty Cobb single sign baseball. It's PSA near mint mint plus 8.5. Wow. <coughs> That's a blazer. It is. It's right off the top. You can see how beautiful yeah. the autograph is, how bold it is, but the interesting backstory to this one, 1961, that's the year Ty Cobb passed away. Uh, this is one of his last signed baseballs right here. It was autographed for a nurse at Emory University Hospital mm. who huh. tended to the inaugural Hall of Famer during the last six weeks of his life. Uh, he checked in in June 1961. He never left. He passed in July of 1961. And this is just an exceptional condition. It comes from the nurse's family. It has a letter of provenance from them. So... One of the boldest Cobb yeah. autographs we've seen, and it's one of the last ones. And it has that great backstory to it. Um, and it's um, personalized to her, to his nurse. And it comes with the backstory in the form of the provenance. And I mean, it would be great if it was just a right. Cobb signed ball that's right. an 8.5. Yeah. 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 But when you have that background that. info. Yeah. It looks that's, even better than 8.5, too, looking at it right here. That's, I know. That's you know, and I just solid. like mm. thinking about Cobb, this gritty, determined guy. He's at the end of his life, the last month of his life, and he had a lot of health problems. Yeah. He, long list. Yeah. But he's still just gritting out a bold autograph. Right. You can't even tell. It looks perfect. Yeah. You hear a lot of stories about the end of his life as well, where he decided he should have been nicer and <laughs> right. <laughs> wish, and he had, wish he had. It's uh, a good example. He's no. uh, signing still a ball doing to that his nurse. Yeah. Yeah. 
And outstanding piece that is in session one. So, okay. all right. And uh, let's see where we're at. Jason, you got, oh, yeah, the I got this. I twenty-nine Yankees ball over there. Yeah, what a great story. So the ball itself. Uh... <laughs> I'm just watching these bits come in. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tony almost fell out of his chair. No, I've. What do we get? The King James, 45000 for the King James. Wow. That is incredible. Yeah. 180 yeah. grand yeah. for the yeah. mantle. Yeah. Sorry, guys. No, no problem. I didn't mean to. That's what it's all about right here. Right. You don't, you don't need to apologize for getting excited. 51000 now. All Sorry. you would do is Sorry. apologize all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. Uh, all right, so the ball alone, what's fantastic about it is this is one that Ruth Signed twice on both sweet spots. No. <laughs> Did he really? <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen them. There's there. Oh, that's both great. Both strong signals. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, those stand out great for the year. Uh, what was the year? 29? 29. Yeah. 29. Yeah. So, you know, right in the prime of Ruth's career. This is uh, beautiful. Um, so the backstory to it is uh, it was a, a game played locally, actually. This is when they had a, uh, a stadium in Dallas where the Dallas Steers played. Sure. Uh, I wish Big fan. <laughs> Dallas Steers. <laughs> uh, They've had a rough few seasons lately. Uh, they're going to come, come back around. New stadium. Uh, so anyway, uh, the consigner's father um, was a shagger for a lot of these games. So they would, you know, they would play barnstorming games. Yep. Like yep. Stuff sure. Come through town and, and just spreading the, uh, the 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 good word of the game and all that kind of stuff. So the consigner's father was a shagger. He would just hang out and and field batting practice balls and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so he did that for Ruth, and he kind of, yeah, of course, it's Babe Ruth, so he kind of follows him around and asks him, um, can, can I, I'll warm you up, can I play catch with you? So he plays catch with him, and after he's wow. done, he runs back up to him and says, can you sign this for me? So, of course, Ruth signs it, and then Ruth, it turns out Ruth kind of liked the kid, so he goes, hang on one second, and he goes into the dugout and gets all sorts of other Yankees to sign, of course. Oh, that's great. Including Lou Gehrig on there. Uh, Ruth was great with the story. kids, that's yeah, for sure. He was yeah, such a nice guy. Legendary. And he comes back out, and the kid, very smart decision, sees that the other sweet spot is open and says, can you sign it again? <laughs> <laughs> back kids. Well, let's there. not get yeah. greedy here, kid. <laughs> wow. And he did. Jeez. So Ruth, Ruth tells the kid afterwards, he said, you better, once this game's over, you hang out in the dugout for a while. If anybody sees the, that ball, they're going to want to take it from you. So, <laughs> hang out for a while. Um, so anyway, all sorts of documentation with it. It, it. You know, there was an article written in the paper about it right afterwards. The consigner gave us a letter that tells us the whole story. Nice. Uh, uh, you know, the quality autographs, uh, there aren't too many um, uh, Ruth twice signed balls with Gary on there and all that kind of stuff as well. So, and like I said, that story that takes story it up one more so level. Good. Absolutely. <laughs> very good stuff, Jason. Thank you very much for joining us. Love the angle you took there. Always a pleasure. So we're still going strong in extended bidding. We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, Tony and I are going to talk about some of the items that are in session two tomorrow that you can look for. You can still bid on tonight and tomorrow. And we'll keep you updated on some of the goings on in the biddings as far as session one right now. So wow. we'll be back in a moment. Hi everyone, I'm Mike Sadler and welcome to the Heritage Auction Search Tutorial, Getting the Most Out of Guided Navigation. This tutorial will give you an understanding of how to navigate the HA.com website when searching for specific items. Let's get started. The best way to get started is by simply typing in a keyword on the Heritage homepage. Today we'll be looking for items from Muhammad Ali, including within all categories, all auctions, and buy now, and with the keywords featured in titles and descriptions. Let's hit the search button. I want to limit my search today to sports. I can further refine my search in sports categories to just baseball or boxing. I'm interested in boxing. This particular lot will be available in an upcoming Heritage Platinum Night Sports Collectibles auction. Another great feature of the Heritage website is the ability to do research by looking at items that have already sold. The same refined search features apply to our archives as well as our current items. In this case, let's look for a budget of say $101 to $1,000. What I'm really interested in is to see the highest price ever paid for a Muhammad Ali lot sold by Heritage Auctions. 
I can again access the filters and delete the parameters I had for the previous price range. And now I click on the Sort Results tab. This is a great feature that allows you to sort items from highest to lowest price when items were sold, even alphabetically. Today we're looking for the highest price first. We can see that there are several items, and the page nicely lays out the items, making each of them easy to view. Another great feature of the Heritage website is the ability to change the view. In addition to gallery mode, you also can change it to a list. If any of these items don't interest you, you can go back and create a want list with the keywords Muhammad Ali. You'll be notified any time an Ali item comes up for sale. Now I want to start over and shift gears completely. I'm going to head up to the Start Over tab and click it. Today I'm looking for items that deal with Superman. Here's something eye-opening, an Andy Warhol Superman painting sold for nearly $150,000. If Superman isn't your thing, you can use the Start Over button and begin a new search for items that do interest you. With this tutorial and a little practice, you'll be breezing through HA.com and our over 40 different categories. Happy hunting! This glove has gone through war with me. It's been through rain, snow, sleet and it's been repaired so many times and um, I didn't allow anyone to put their, their hands in my glove, anyone. I'm Devon White, three-time World Series champion, three-time All-Star, seven-time Gold Glove winner. I want to talk about the catch, you know, um, we have Guzman on the mound, um, Justice hitting. I usually play Justice to pull the ball and hey, it happened that he, you know, he tricked everyone. He went to the left center field a little bit and balled in the ballpark, I, I was that beast to say, if the ball is in the ballpark, I'm going to catch it. And you know, that time, that place, everything was in line. And hey, when I caught that ball, I hit the fence at the same time, I wasn't worrying about it because with this right here, anything that touches it is going to stay. I have half of my, my hands that's in my glove. I never stick it all the way in. Um, all the fingers are in. I don't put two fingers in one or anything. I love the fast back because it, it feels good on the back of my hand. Um, I like the H web. But like I said, this glove has probably been repaired like you know two or three times. And you know, it still to this day can go out there and you know catch a line drive right at you without you know um, breaking. But um, this is my glove, this is my weapon. And you know, I, I feel the person that gets this glove is gonna be, is a lot of history behind it. I'm talking about my first gold glove winner, when I won it and they announced it, it was like, oh, well, great, you know, I amount these guys, but it really hit me when they gave it to me opening day in Anaheim Stadium. And, you know, um, it, it was incredible. It was incredible. It was just like, oh, okay, wait a minute. I gotta go out there in front of, you know, all these people, which I play, you know, I, in front of them every day, but just to be singled out and put out there and say, Devon White, you know, gold glove winner. It's just like, okay. And then when I want it now, just like, I'm not giving it to anyone. And that means, you know, seven came after that, but it was just like, if I didn't win, it was a disappointment. So, um, you know, having it out there now for the public to see or to, you know, bid on it, it's, it's, it's something that's, like you say, it's very rare. The Large World Series trophies wasn't um, purchased by everyone. It's something that um, um, you as a ball player, if you wanted it, you know, a trophy, you know, to put in your trophy case, you know, you had to go out and, and get it from Major League Baseball. And at that time, you know, all the players were eligible to do that. But with the team that we have, I don't think um, a lot of my teammates did, you know, especially the back-to-back -back, um, in the 92 and 93. You know, like I said, the back-to-back, -back, there was maybe 10 returning players. And if so, you know, the Violin White World Series trophies would be, you know, one of 10, if that, if anyone got it. As far as, far as the smaller ones is concerned, um, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you how many guys um, uh, bought them, but going forward, you know, those World Series are very rare um, for, for players to just get them. It's very rare to, to see them out there. 
if you see any at all. Talking to you about the, the, the Florida Marlins um, after becoming a free agent, it wasn't the same as Toronto Blue Jays, but it was incredible just, just, just being there with, you know, the, guy, the, the Gary Sheffield, the Moise Alou, and, you know, the other guys that we, we brought into the mix at the end of the year. It was, it was, it was a pleasure playing there, and, you know, I will be, you know, showing off that ring with this Devon White, you know, collection that, you know, that's one of the rings that I think you can wear it, and it's not too small, it's not too big, and I, I, I think it's the perfect size. I think one of my favorite things that I'm letting go that's going up to auction, you know, one of the favorite is this, my glove. And of course, you know, the two World Series big trophies. And I just want to give the fans, the auctioneer, the people that are, are buying these things, the opportunity to, you know, enjoy the stuff that I have. Toronto and Canada is where I hit my stride as a ball player. Those back-to-back -back Blue Jays championship teams were incredible to play on, and the fans in Toronto and across Canada was a pleasure to play for. As a thanks to you, I am donating a portion of the proceeds from the Devon White Collection to the Canadian Cancer Society. Cancer has personally affected my family and the loved ones of so many of my Canadian friends. Back. Session one is going strong in extended bidding right now. Very yes. strong. <laughs> Very strong. It's got the Tony seal of approval. I don't get excited about much, do I? No, I, I rarely ever see it. Um, you need to take it up a notch. All right. It's <laughs> platinum night, Tony. Yeah, I know. Very exciting. Um, I'm going to take this opportunity to also mention, you know, we have another auction that's live right now. We do. We... Our vintage sports photography auction, which closes next week on the 29th, and there are some amazing photographs in there. Yes, there are. Um, every other Wednesday at 2.30, we do a Facebook Live, Tony and I, and we'll be doing it this week, and we're going to talk a lot about those photos. So uh, if you have a minute, you should check it out. That is a burgeoning part of the hobby it right is. now, and yes. there's some great images. So <clears throat> we're going to talk about some of the items that are in Session 2. Session 2 of the Platinum Auction closes tomorrow night. Extended bidding begins at 10 p.m. Central Time for that as well. So you got to get you can bid right now if you want. Before we get to that, one piece I wanted to highlight real quick that's in Session 1. This is one of my favorite items in the auction. Uh, this is a 1939 Lou Gehrig signed four-page letter to his Mayo Clinic doctor. Who he was also friends. 1939, right there. That's the year he passed. It so, um, or that he finished his career. So, the doctor was coming to visit him later. So Garrick wrote him this letter, and it just has unbelievable content in here. A lot of him saying, "Hey, I want the truth. What's really happening?" Um, it's lengthy and just heartbreaking in a lot of ways, but. Uh, deeply personal insight into a legend who was notoriously private mm -hmm. and there's even some moments where you see uh, a sense of humor from him which we don't see many examples of no that. and there's i mean just given his diagnosis too um, my goodness but uh we can see that he took a very active role in his treatment from this letter uh the fight against his namesake disease even uh, discussing various medications and his specific symptoms, lamenting increasing pains in his back and weakness in his grip. And on the last page, he, ha he offers a sample of his handwriting. And anybody who's familiar with Lou Gehrig's signature can see that this one's very different. Uh, it's not as bold and strong, and he has a really beautiful, artful he um, always did, yes. Autograph, and you can see on this one that uh, he was struggling a bit. And it's a four-page letter. There is a lot in here. You can read it all online. We have the complete text online. But I um, just wanted to read this passage where he says, quote, I am mentioning these facts to find out from a truthful organization what your experiences have been and what my hope for encouragement is. Al Reiser told me that the big thing I need now with, with my excellent attention is courage. I do not want to be a hero, and I would hate like hell to be a crybaby, but I would also like to know the facts, if any. Wow. Yeah, so that's him talking to his doctor, and, you know, a lot of people, when you have a 
horrible diagnosis like that. You just want to know what the real truth is. Yes. And especially yeah. if you're a celebrity. He was a huge celebrity at the time, and he wanted to find out what exactly was going on with him. It's a mysterious disease. It is now. Imagine back then. Nobody yeah. even knew when about it. Was it. A, That's why it was named such a, after In him. its early stages. And this is really a remarkable piece. One of a kind, of it course. It is. And uh, so that's in session one. What's it at right now? 62,500, 62, I believe, is what it thousand. was at. And uh, just quickly, I'm going to mention uh, the Leroy Neiman painting that we have of Lou Alcindor. Uh, really incredible and massive. It's huge. We were trying to take a video of it. We couldn't even stand it up straight <laughs> in here. That's how big it is. And, of course, it's in the iconic hook shot. Um, we sold a very large, I believe it was 10 feet tall, Leroy Neiman of Muhammad Ali, and this one is even bigger than that one. So, very cool piece there. Um, why don't you talk about that ticket you got there? All right. This is, when you want to talk about iconic, Tom Brady, uh, you know, very, uh, almost not even regarded, <laughs> Um, <laughs> as a rookie, he, he never got to play much at all. Um, the, the team signed Drew Bledsoe to a huge, huge deal. And Bledsoe got hurt in 2001, almost died. And uh, Tom Brady took over, and everything, has cha everything changed that day. This is, from, this is a full ticket from the game when he took over for, for Drew Bledsoe. Uh, not a lot of these tickets out there. This one's a, it's a full ticket graded near mint seven. Um, PSA is very difficult on their grading of tickets. True. And uh, this is one of the nicest ones. I believe this has a fifteen hundred dollar estimate. That's um, got Bledsoe from the, on the front. There. It does have Bledsoe yeah. on the front too. Kind That's of an a eerie cool thing. part of it. It it is it is. And you know I mean I don't think too many people thought of keeping their tickets from that game because nobody knew Tom Brady would become what Tom Brady has become. Right. And the ticket market, very strong because, again, PSA does grade tickets. And uh, the market, yeah, is uh, really up on these kind of things. And especially from his first extended action. Oh, of course. And they won, too. So we talked earlier about how we have things. Well, they lost. Besides. <laughs> Sorry. I thought, they, I thought they won the game. I could. <laughs> Tony's always fact-checking himself. I'm sorry. I'm, I beat right myself there. up like here. That. No need for that. So we talked about how sometimes... <laughs> Um, we get non-sports items. And this is one right here that's in the auction that really caught my eye. This is 1963 Lee Harvey Oswald's last paycheck issued for his employment during the period that JFK was assassinated. So there's a lot of collectors who like things like this. There's a lot of angles to this one. It's presidential related. It's JFK related. It's conspiracy related. A huge moment in American history, of course, this was 10 days after the assassination. This was issued by the Texas Book Depository. Oh, man. Uh, and it was issued to his widow uh, for $43.47. And it has a note on it that says, Four days, Lee Harvey Oswald for November 63. Handwritten note there. Uh, if is Oswald was indeed a shooter on the last day of employment, then uh, this check effectively covers the time when he changed American history. He did, right there. yeah. Um, of course, a lot of people are interested in that kind of memorabilia, and this is one of the top pieces, in my opinion, you can have. What's it at? 57,500. 57,000 right there. Uh, so, yeah, very interesting piece. We'll uh, yeah. That. Interesting piece. Um, up next. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Right, this is in session two. We're going to talk about some of the items in session two. Boy, you just have to bring it out when it's... Oh, this. very this neat. The, yeah. 2017 Panini Flawless Patrick Mahomes 2 Canary Yellow Diamond Rookie Autograph. This is the complete print right here, the complete run. and The, hottest, see, the hottest football player right now. It comes in its own suitcase. Tony, how come we don't sell everything with the I suitcase? wish we did. I like that. <laughs> just have a stainless steel suitcase full of Giannis <laughs> Game Worn jersey or something like that. But yeah, they're right in here. Flip it around so we can get a view. But full print run of the extremely rare Panini Flawless Yellow Diamond Rookie Autograph of Mahomes. He's doing pretty good right now. He's not bad. He's not bad. Yeah, he has, he has so a good future. Super he Bowl really title. Does. 
Super Bowl MVP. Um, each card in this is serial numbered to just three. Here, maybe I can hold it up so you guys can see there. Uh, it's been, they've all been graded by Beckett, of course, and this is a great opportunity to purchase the entire print run for one of the rarest Mahomes rookie autograph on the market. And a homie. Sorry. It's coming in this box. <laughs> like that. <laughs> like that. All right. 125000 for the George Brett Pine Tar jersey. Nice. That's, that got deserves hit. that. That's it does. It does. Let's talk about that Ricky Henderson. We take a lot of phone Total calls on, 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 on baseball cards. I mean, it's it's such a it's our bread and butter probably right now. Although they may they this isn't a hard card to find. To find it in this condition is nearly impossible. Centering on these is usually the downfall. This one here is graded Gem Mint 10, uh, PSA Gem Mint 10. It has a 30,000 estimate. It's at 23,000 right now. Um, it's just, just Ricky being Ricky. It's Ricky being Ricky. One of the greatest athletes of all time. One um, of the best quotes. Oh, of all he time. was. He Everything was, that came out of his mouth should was be just oh, embroidered on a pillow. They should do a. They they really should do a movie on him. Yeah. Because he was so unique. And Who do you think should play him? <sighs> God, I'd have to. I'd have to. Michael think B. On that. Jordan. Maybe. <laughs> he plays everybody though. I know. He's, he's that good. And he's great at the athlete uh, roles as well. I know you've seen Creed. I have. Yeah. Rob Rosen. Rob Rosen made me watch Creed. And then the second one. Too, what else does Rob Rosen make you do? Uh, he hates my date book. He hates my <laughs> calendar book. And he Tony just cring- is old school. He cringes sure. whenever I... When, if he sees it, I mean, he, he said he's going to confiscate it one of these days. <laughs> we'll get to that later. Well, he'd have to stay up later than 5 p.m. to do that, <laughs> probably. Wow. Uh, this is a very unique item. It's in session two. It's going to be closing tomorrow night. This is a 1934 Babe Ruth signed Gaudi Premium. You ever seen one of these before? I have not, no. Yes. I've, I've never seen one signed, I'll put it that way. Yeah. Uh, we're aware of only one other. Okay. And that one's personalized, and this one is not. So the finer one right here. It's one of the most famous photographs of sports' most famous figures right here. And uh, not just because of the perfection in the artistry of it, but uh, it was also included in the 1933 Gaudi baseball issue. And everybody's familiar with that card. One of my favorites. Um, it's in the big three, the sets, for sure. Mm-hmm. And um, this is the largest incarnation of the rare 34 Gaudi premium. And a tiny four-subject issue available only through the mail via gum wrapper redemption. And so you've got a signed one here, a really nice autograph from Babe, and we think this is going to do about 25000 His autograph is the, the cornerstone, the cornerstone of, the of Yes, Were it is. I was, I was thinking, how did you, not, you can right, read my mind? That, that Fleer box. Uh, every time I post something on our social media about these, it goes nuts, and rightfully so. The last one we sold went for 84000 That is correct. And this... I believe this has a sixty or seventy thousand dollar estimate. Every time I see one of these, I always wonder how many times was I at a card show or was at a card shop and I walked by those and never ever thought about buying one. And how much was it at the time? Oh, it couldn't have been I don't know, ten, twenty bucks maybe for yeah. a box. Still not a great investment. No, I mean, no, eighty grand. Mm. Well, I remember my, my, my brother bought was gonna buy the the Magic Bird rookie year, and I go, why would you why would you buy basketball cards? Buy baseball, and uh, <laughs> financial that, planner Tony. Yes, Beasley, right? yes. <laughs> Whatever I say, do the opposite. That's the moral of the story. Um, but yeah, whenever I post anything about it, it turns into a debate. Crack it open or no, no. Leave it as is. it's it's uh, it's just, they they've just continued to go up in value. And there are people that are. Breaking them open, so they're not making any more of these. They're so not, they're, no. They're just getting rarer it's and get, rarer. Yeah, they're getting less and less because with all the, the uh, breakers. But you do you. I say to <laughs> you, do you. If you win it, you can do whatever you would like. Okay, love this one. I just did a Ruth item, but uh, this is another great one right here. It's from 1933. This is Babe Ruth and Duke Kahanamoku. You familiar with his exploits? I'm not, but I saw I, I saw bids coming in on it. Yeah, so he's best known as the father of surfing. 
is maybe there's a photo one. right with yes. that oh, that's this is it that's right the here. photo take okay. a look take a look tony that's a beautiful ruse signature outstanding photo too but um before he became famous for being the father of surfing uh, he had international fame as the first superstar of swimming with three gold and two silver medals at the olympics in 1912 1920 and 1924 and, of course, the most famous athlete on the Hawaiian Islands. and those guys are pretty strong, those guys are. Yeah. Com uh, even Ruth kind of looks like... I'd say he's in decent shape, perhaps. Uh, Ruth, you know, athletics takes all kinds. So Yes. Uh, but this was when the 34 baseball tour of Japan, they stopped in Hawaii. Oh, well, they did. The You're right. They did. And so uh, Duke was a local legend, of course, and... Here he is with Ruth uh, by an outrigger canoe, and got the islands in the background. You got the surf. I mean, it's really got it all. And then beautiful autographs, mint nine. Yeah. For both. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Um, two legends in their field, right there, <laughs> and this very unique item. All right, Tony. More Babe Ruth. Yes. 1927 signed, but the inscription on this really, really takes the. Uh, it does. I've never seen it He before. wrote Four Bagger, and he, it's inscribed from October 5th of 1927. So, Murder's Row, World Series. Um, I don't want to, I, I mean, he would, I don't want to say at the height of his popularity, but um, definitely, you know, the most famous Yankee team. He'd inscribe things, he'd personalize things, but I've never seen this inscription before, and I can't imagine there being another one out there. No. Um, this came out of an autograph collection. That came into the Beverly Hills office. Oh, yeah. And we they have an had an office a... in Beverly Hills. Global company. Um, yep. We have a lot of satellite offices around. Do, Our home office do. is here in Dallas. We are in the home office. We are in the home office. If you could look <laughs> around us, we're surrounded by millions of dollars of cards and collectibles right now. But that's just uh, our 9 to 5. Or for Rob Rosen, his uh, 10 to 3. And, uh, wow. you know, it's a, it's a great place to work. And we get to see all these unique items every day. And here's one right here. This is a 1859 Baseball Players Pocket Companion. Interesting thing about the title, you'll notice that baseball is two words back then. Yes. As it is yes. on the title here. This is the first book dedicated to baseball. Right here. This is it. Uh, it marks the first time that baseball appeared as a book's sole subject. <laughs> Editions of this book were also published in 1860 and 61. But the 59 model that this is, is both the first and the most desirable. So this is in session two tomorrow. It's believed that there is less than 10 copies that exist. Of that. And wow. here's one right here. I would love to open it up for you, but I'm not going to. But if it's you go fragile. online, you can see some of the pages. And uh, they are spectacular. Um, it's got rules and diagrams and illustrations of players. It is a truly remarkable piece and uh, still tightly bound. St I mean, considering how old it is, it's in great condition. But Be careful with it. A fabulous <laughs> piece. And uh, if you win it, you can leaf through it. And I will tell you, it is worth it. Tell Mike what what's revealed on the inside of these pages, please. Because <laughs> we like to find out what's... <laughs> well, I can tell you that you can see right away that... Um, the rivalry between New York and Massachusetts, full swing. Serious? Right in here. They really? They played uh, two different versions of the game. There was a lot of different versions back then, a lot of little differences in the rules, mm -hmm. and those were two different ones. That in New York and Massachusetts, they played a different version. So even back then, and uh, so it has the geographic locations, and it describes how it's played here, how it's played here. So you keep it in your pocket, and you're from New York, and you're going to Massachusetts, and you see some people playing ball. You're like, yeah, but what are the rules over here? Bam, right there in your pocket. There you go. Win that. All right, Tony, and you're up with uh, ooh, 1894 Baltimore Orioles pin. Oh, there it is right there. Oh. The beautiful thing about this, the graphics on it. Yes. Um, the graphics are just unbelievable on this pin. It's got, the, well, the, the other side has... It's a composite photo of all the players, many Hall of Famers. Um, I mean that that seven or eight, right? Yeah, on the yeah, roster? yeah. There were there were just as something like this has survived. Uh, Still got the same colors. It does. It does. The it's just a beautiful, beautiful pin. Um, again, early baseball, 
but just aesthetically, it's beautiful. It is. It really is. And both sides have graphics on them and uh, some, something like this. Yeah, I mean, you want something early from the history of baseball, this would be it. Yeah, and if you're an Orioles collector, maybe you couldn't afford <laughs> Brooks Robinson's World Series ring. But this but is a cool piece. It that's... is, it is. And, and that's something you can put in. The, it, it displays well. And, um, you know, that so, so often, so many times, that's such a big thing is how can you display it? And that's something you can display very, very well. That's a head turner. It is. It is. It is. Yep. Yep. All right. This is a, another great display piece here, which I'm not going to pull out because it's so large. But it's a 1924 oh, I love those panoramics. World Series panoramic, and it's got President Calvin Coolidge in there as well. Uh, very rare and desirable, of course. And this is the finest of an endangered breed right here, uh, both for the condition it's in and the masterful execution. Very hard to store these things. A lot of times people would roll them up, and then when you unroll them, they kind of crack. Yes. We've seen a lot come in that rolled, yes. they were rolled long ago, yep. and yep. they're cracked. And there's nothing you can really do. Panoramics, I think, are just, they're, they're, they're so beautiful, and they're so limited. A lot of times they gave them to players or executives. You just can't find them all that often, and uh, yeah, the and especially now with the photography market the way it is, yeah. uh, panoramics bears, are those are going to get even higher. Yes, yes, and, I agree. 100%. That one's a real work of art. Uh, it's from 1924 when the Senators won. Walter Johnson. Walter Johnson, won. sure. They didn't win again until this last year. year. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So uh, great piece, very timely, mm. right there, and it's got Coolidge in there. There's a ton of Hall of Famers in it. But you should look at it online. It's crisp and beautifully preserved. Yeah, yeah. I love All those right. panoramics. You got that Joe Jackson bat just sitting there. Can we talk about that, please? I feel like I'm lifting weights right now. <laughs> uh, very, very large bat. Joe Jackson, of course, Black Betsy's the one from his playing days. But this was when he was suspended from baseball. He continued to play and played at a high level, doing a lot of exhibitions. Uh, this is from... Oh, he's probably crushing those guys. Oh, my God. Me? Could you imagine? <laughs> that is not fair. He's one of the greatest players ever. But he even played, like, late He's going like, to in some his... beer league. <laughs> <laughs> he probably batted 900. <laughs> but, uh, you know, anything Joe Jackson, we've said it many times, incredibly difficult to find. Autographs, almost non-existent. Any game-used items... Um, you know, even if it is barnstorming, right. still very, very collectible. And one of the greatest hitters ever. So one of the like absolute... we talked about at the top with Dan, having the bat, yep. his tool of the trade right there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, no matter what, his name's always going to be at the forefront. Yes, the, the, the suspension. There has always been a big movement to try to get him reinstated, to get him into the Hall of Fame. Are I you don't... leading that movement? No. No, I read the book and I you just, don't have the time. I, no, I, I read the book and I mean, I, I don't know if he should be in, but if Pete Rose ever does get in, this guy will be going in as well. Yeah, and I think so too. It, it, uh, I don't know. I <laughs> Say it is so true. <laughs> All right, I've got another item too big to hold up, so you're just going to check it out oh. online, but that's what makes it significant is how big it is. This is the 1962 safe at home three sheet movie poster um you ever seen this movie tony i have not, not is it great. good not great. no no uh it wasn't exactly challenging lawrence of arabia the uh, <laughs> oscars that year but it is cool that uh it was 1962 it's mantle and maris and we've stole sold a few examples of the standard one sheet in the past but this is the first time we've seen the towering three sheet it is 81 by 27. Wow. It is massive. So it's like as big as a door is a way to think about it. And it's in great condition. Um, just a beautiful piece. And if you're a Yankee collector, a lot of people have those one sheet. This is where you, you the, get the three sheets. This is the real, this is the real you deal. You spend maybe, you know, 150 200 extra dollars on framing. That's fine. But it is fantastic. When the consigner pulled it out, I was there. We were all like, what? Those exist, you know. That's one of those things we'd never seen it before. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful piece. Uh, it should do about ten grand. And especially, I mean, 1961, 62. I mean, I mean, that's the Eminem boys. Yeah. And uh, right in that yeah, era. Yeah, yeah. You got that uh, lease agreement over there. I think this is one of the very, very underrated piece in this auction. 
This is the actual agreement for the Chicago Cubs to play at Wrigley Field. Unbelievable. Yeah, and I, you know, just, just, doing, just doing some of the research on it, um, you know, Charles Wiegman was the owner, and that I, sounds I, like he, a Chicago name. It does. You know, I, like I just can't believe hustling out there, mm -hmm. making things happen. This is something that should that that the Cubs should definitely if they ever do a museum or if they ever do you know their own hall of fame or whatever this is something that would be perfect for that yeah. i mean wrigley field is um you know it's a timeless it's american thing. landmark it is it is i've only, i've only been there one time wow really 1990 you've been to wrigleyville 50 times no <laughs> i went there in november one time Put down a few old style yeah style oh there. old style yes <laughs> no but uh i i mean it's it, it's really a landmark you're right it is and this is this is what they signed to get them it's to crazy. play when it you is. showed me that i couldn't believe i know it. i was shocked because i'm like well it, maybe it's for something else but no it's the actual lease and so. if you're a cubs fan that oh a that's a great piece great piece have. absolutely all right this one coming up uh i'm also not going to hold because it's a work of art but you can check it out online this is a 1940s babe ruth signed baseball with Charles Fazzino artwork, are you familiar? Those are popular. With him? Those are popular. Yes. So he's I a wrote popular, up a popular artist. Uh, he redecorates things a lot, but I'd never seen one like this. And I brought this one out because of that Babe Ruth autograph. That's a nine out of ten, right there. Wow, that's <laughs> beautiful. Blazing autograph. Uh, he's following in the um, steps, uh, footsteps of George Sosnack here, and uh, I hadn't seen a Ruth one. And I bet a lot of people would say, oh, you shouldn't do that to a Ruth ball. But there are a lot of Ruth balls out there, for sure. I wonder <coughs> if uh, Charles Fazzino was nervous when he was uh, doing the artwork on that I ball. Bet. Because, boy, if he screws that one up, uh, that's not going to be a fun <laughs> conversation to have. Uh, a great whoever. artist once told me there's no mistakes in art. So Wow. Yeah. That's deep. Mm -hmm. That's deep, Mike. But very cool <laughs> piece. And... Uh, we think that's worth about fifteen grand, but a blazing roof signature. It's gorgeous. Right there. All right, Tony, you've got uh, that Bill Terry jersey. That, speaking of unique, this is the definition of unique this right is. here. It's like Christmas morning, guys. Every day here. Every day. Be very careful here. because Yeah, please do. Uh, so this is a 39 Bill Terry Game worn New York Giants jersey. Look how careful you're being, Tony. <laughs> uh, there's nice. a couple moth moth holes in it, but um, you know, Hall of Famer flannels are just so collectible and very hard to find. Some players, this may be one of the only ones out there. We are saying this it's is the, the only, only one. one yeah. So some of these you just can't find some of these Hall of Fame flannels. And if it's the only one, you're going to have a spirited bidding. A lot of guys will be after this. Yeah, I New love, York. oh, you've got New York, you've got the Hall of Fame. And, you know, if anybody who collects Hall of Famers, they're not going to have them. This is the only one you can get. It was the only one we could find on record. And just how beautiful it is. They would stitch the player's name in the collar like that. I do the same in my collar. In do my you? Tux. Oh. Yeah, it's got a chain stitching Provenzale in there. It goes <laughs> almost all the way around the back of the collar. Really? Mm -hmm. sure the things you learn. Uh, it's got the year also in the in the back of the tail here, and the number. Um, you know, like I said, when you're talking one of one, there some of these is. things you just can't find, and this is definitely one of them, of one of the, one of the probably one of the best ball players in New York. You didn't want to go out on a limb there. Did you? No, this <laughs> is <laughs> staying right by the trunk. All right, what kind like of bids we got going on? Session All right, right there. Let's let's, let's take a look. An update. Joe DiMaggio, game worn jersey, two hundred thousand. There we go. That's the World Series. Game it is. Jersey, game it is. Five. Yes. Um, that seems valuable. Yeah. Joe DiMaggio, World Series, game worn. What more do you need? We got a sixty-one mantle at one hundred and ninety thousand right now. There we go. Wait, Hoyt, eighty-two grand. Um, oh, boy, a lot of legends there's, there's you're throwing out there. Yeah. No, I mean this is just an incredible, incredible auction. And here's another legend right here. I like that piece a great deal. This is Wayne Gretzky. This I is love 1979 that. Wayne Gretzky first NHL goal ticket stub. The population on this one? One. 
This it's is the, the only, only one. one in a PSA slab right here. Uh, he entered the professional ranks as a teenager, of course. Indianapolis. You know how old he was when they started calling him the great one? He was 17? Seven. Oh, God. Seven when he garnered the nickname the great one. You weren't, you had to wait until you were 12. I did, I did, yes. So, uh, yes. In Edmonton, he won four Stanley Cups, of course. Uh, the whole country celebrated the moment he signed his first professional contract but who had the mind to keep to a keep ticket the ticket from his first goal Sorry and it wasn't his first game was it it was not the so 14th 1979 uh five weeks later someone sitting at this table was born it's me <laughs> wow in case you didn't know between Whoa. the two of us <laughs> uh, i was gonna guess mike but uh yeah so his first goal he was with the edmonton oilers and uh, as of right now, this is the only one in a PSA holder right here. Yeah, and like I said, tickets really doing strong right now, and Gretzky is far and away the best hockey player ever, and yes. I don't know how close it is. And I think is. you've got a debut uh, ticket over there that could buy a Oh, that. yes, Michael Jordan. We have had some outstanding prices on these Jordan debut tickets. I believe we got like 15000 for one, mm -hmm. if not more. Um, this one, it's a stub, graded two, but uh, display is really, really nice. For eight dollars and fifty cents, you could see Michael Jordan play his first game. Eight dollars. His first and NBA 50 game. Cents, huh? Yes, Michael Jordan debut. I mean, this is this this will definitely go probably ten to fifteen thousand on this one. Um, really, really nice Jordan early ticket. All right. So another debut of sorts right here. This is from 1995. You know anybody who made their debut in 1995? <laughs> I graduated high school in 95. Wow. All right. <laughs> well, this is a Derek Jeter Major League debut lineup card. This is a lineup card wow. for his first Major League game. Uh, Buck Walter. Who would have thought to keep Pinsley. that even? I know. Seriously. Um, a genius, whoever did. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Far smarter than us. And just to all those little leaguers out there that are watching at what time is it, 11 o'clock? It is 11.07. Go, go to bed. Go to bed. Uh, but maybe, you know, you're struggling a little bit. You're the number nine hitter. Hey, keep at it, because look uh, what slot Jeter was in right here. Was he Was he really? Number nine. Number nine in the batting order. And where's he going to be at the end of the summer? At the Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Don't ever give up, kids. But great piece here. Everything Jeter is going crazy, of oh course, my as goodness. it should. Look and at that. There's only one of these. He only yeah. made one debut. There's only one lineup card from it. Oh, that is crazy. You know, people might have the ticket or a program or something from it, but bam, the lineup card. And it comes with the Mariners lineup card, too. They're playing the Mariners, if you're interested. <laughs> Griffey Jr. <laughs> So this Kobe Bryant jersey um, was won at a raffle, actually. During Af a game. Dur after a game, the person who won this got their got to have their photo taken with the Laker girls as well. That's and a nice I, little bonus. I right think there. it was the four. The where it was ticket number fourteen. They forgot the jersey afterwards. <laughs> yeah, they didn't even. <laughs> um, game worn jersey with a letter of a provenance from the Lakers no less yeah, Lakers team letter this is at I think it was when I saw it last 21,000 of course with Kobe passing away um, his autograph has gone crazy but his game used items um, especially one with direct pro provenance from the team uh, yeah, this thing could that. go for 30,000 if not more uh, tomorrow night this ends yeah this so all session two stuff so it's going to be tomorrow night yeah this and is, um Got to have your bids in by 10 p.m. Central Time tomorrow. Same situation we were in today. Uh, we just got a couple more items. Let's, let's keep going, Tony. Keep All going right. with uh, basketball. Oh, who's Somebody this guy? I, I know you could talk about oh, I, at length right there. You don't there. want me to. And, yes, he will stay in Milwaukee, everybody. Please. Oh, is that we don't, uh, Everybody's worrying about it already. A easy guarantee. Oh, I hope so. Oh, Giannis at $10,000 right now. Milwaukee Bucks, best record in the NBA. Um, odds on favorites to hopefully win the NBA title this year. Photo match, game worn jersey, originally purchased from the team. Uh, it's got a ten thousand. It's it's at ten thousand right now. 
who knows? It could go for more. I know one just sold for twenty thousand on Thursday, and his All Star jersey is at ten thousand right now. Yeah. Also being sold. So the market, um, yes, he's in a small market, but that being said, they are playing really, really well. I mean, he's right there with LeBron. You know, he is. He um, is. Yeah. It's hard to say LeBron isn't the face of the NBA right now, but I mean, a, an argument, is. an argument could be made for it. Yes. Um, and he's just starting out, really. He is, he is. And he works hard. You a fan? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most sedated. That, oh, I don't want to sound too excited. Here's something I'm very, I know you like that piece. I very know you excited do. about right here. Uh, Shake and Bake. Never saw the movie. Never saw I the movie. I never saw the movie. Tony? I am Chris sorry. Ivey, fire this man. Oh, you got me. You got it. You're on camera stating that. This is a 2006 Will Ferrell Talladega Nights Ballad of Ricky Bobby worn. It's a costume, but it's an actual race suit. Yes, it is an actual uh, race we suit. We sold a few race suits. We have a Mario Andretti worn race suit in this auction. Very similar uh, in that it was worn by absolute greatness. Both are winners. Yes. Of the so, highest order. Uh, Will Ferrell wore this. Uh, it was the first Wonder Bread uniform he wore in the movie. Uh, it was after a race he was wearing this one. And um, it's built to his dimensions, 6'4". Yes. Um, you know, and it just smells like hilarity. <laughs> uh, classic wow. movie. Big fan personally. And uh, <laughs> I've never seen one of these before. In fact, I've never seen a Will Ferrell uh, screen-worn item. I know they're out there. It actually shows wear to it, too. It's not, you know, stone But, you know, and like a lot that. of screen-worn things, um, especially for comedies, it's going to be, like, khakis or a T-shirt, yeah, you know, yeah. or something. But this is very identifiable. It is. And it is. Uh, very iconic. But So this is going down tomorrow night. And if you're looking for something very unique that uh, is going to be a conversation starter, you put that on a, right on a life size mannequin and uh, yeah, you're good to go. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And if you need a Will Ferrell life size mannequin, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a place that could supply it. Uh, very cool item. Thank you to our consigners who consign non sports items. I'm a big fan of those. Um, where are we at? All right. A couple more things. So this is one that's too big for me to hold up also, <laughs> but definitely deserves a mention. It's a 1936 New York Yankees imperial-sized photograph. This hung in Yankee Stadium. And this is the 36 World oh, Champion I remember when that came Yankees. In. I remember seeing that. It was originally purchased by collector and famed boxing historian and should be in the name Hall of Fame, Burt Sugar. Oh, God. Guy's With sweet. the big cigar. He yes. always had the cigar. Uh, he is exactly what you think a boxing historian yes, should look yes. like. And so he owned this previously. When they renovated Yankee Stadium in 1973 is when he acquired it. And someone's going to acquire it in our auction session two tomorrow night. And it measures 39 by 29. So it is huge. And you got world champs. you got Burt Sugar right there. You got a lot going on. What more do you want? Great piece. And another very unique piece. This is a 1962 to 63 Mickey Mantle Jello advertising <laughs> display, and I don't get to say Jello often enough. Uh, we all know Rob Rosen's a big fan of Jello, of course. Uh, it's his dessert, Luby's. Um, but this is tremendously rare. It was used to promote the uh, popular snack in the 60s, and this is one of the few examples. And it comes with a letter of provenance from the consigner who worked at a Medallion Foods <laughs> supermarket, and they had that display up in the store, and when they took it down, he asked if they could have it, and he's had it ever since. And then now somebody's going to get it. It is in great condition. And it's got mantle on it, it's too. It's got mantle on it. I mean, that's it. such a cool thing, and it's color. Nobody awesome. doesn't love Jello. I mean, it's just perfect. <laughs> but that's one of those rare Everybody loves Mickey Mantle. Piece. Oh, the cameraman's iffy on Jello. Don't let Rob Rosen hear you say that. I Last piece any. of the night, it's Michael Jordan. One of the earliest signatures I've, I've ever seen of him. Yes. One of the, or probably one of the earliest on a basketball as well. And You'll it's see a Nike basketball. It is, yeah. So I mean, that, that's that's, that's quote right unquote there. earlier Nike. And usually, what you'll see, you'll see them on UNC basketballs. Yes. You can, you, that, those you can find. 
there's not a ton of them out there, but that is the first, that's the earliest I've ever seen a single signed basketball of his. Yeah, so there's a good number of Jordan signatures out there. So there's a real premium price on that early format, and that's one of the earliest we've seen. Pine Tar Jersey 140. There we go. It's just going to keep going. I know, I know. So, unfortunately, we have to call it a night. We'd love to what? stay with you all night. You the sure? Whole, the whole crew is begging to do that, just to keep <laughs> going. I think Taylor could go a little more. He's, he's good. Taylor. Never mind. Never. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but extended bidding is going to continue. You guys can follow along. We've got session two tomorrow night. More incredible items. I mean, session two, the plat our platinum auction is the premier event in the hobby. Uh, we have two a year, and session two is session two of our platinum auction is better than other auction houses. Session one of their best it's, auction, uh, yeah. So it's, check that out. There's impressive. some very unique, interesting items. Those one of a kind items we've been talking about. Extended bidding begins at 10 p.m. Central Time. Next week we've got our photo auction closing, and we are taking consignments for our May auction cards and memorabilia. Tony would love to talk to you about that or anything, really. Anything. Uh, Jello, perhaps. Maybe? Beef jerky, <laughs> Mountain Dew. For sure. We can, yeah. Um, so, a quick word of thanks. Thank you very much to our consigners who trust us with these legendary and iconic items. We are humbled that we get to see them. Thank you, and we love the opportunity you give us to present them. Thank you to our bidders. Uh, we can't do it without you guys, of course. Thank you for your feedback and all our fans out there. They're all Tony's fans, but I'll take a few off the side. Um, and we need to thank our operations staff who works behind they did, the scenes. They did a wonderful job. Uh, our this main time. man, Matt, tonight, really working hard getting all the lots ready for us. Uh, he was too shy to come on screen this time, but we're going to get him to. on. Next time, though, he has to. Next time, actually, yes, he said sure. he was afraid of becoming a reality star, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, which we all are. I'm terrified of such things. Um, but thank you and to our operations staff who isn't here tonight, but they are the hardest working people in the department. They toil endlessly. It's a cool place to work. It is a very cool job, but it is still work. And uh, they so keep to me all in a of them, room, yes, tough. Aaron and Cody and Sarah and Jack, yep. thank you very much for all you guys do. And then our crew here that does these live shows, it looks so professional, and that is no accident. That is a lot of hard work, too. Well, your, your dress was, I mean, you're, you, know, you look great yourself. Too. Yeah, I well, mean, there's look... a whole team that does that in my hand. Oh, I, mean, okay. I, I, I uh, thought I thought. But I reward them with the money. These people I'm rewarding with words. Thank you <laughs> Wow. Much. So You're to, so uh, nice. Emily, Magnus, Kyler, and uh, that guy in the bag, whatever his name is. Uh, wow. Taylor, you said it That's was? That's Taylor. Okay, Taylor. Nice to meet you, Taylor. Thank you very much. They work really hard to make this look the way it does, and we appreciate it. And on Wednesday, we've got Facebook Live, 2.30. If you didn't get enough of it tonight, there's oh. more on Wednesday. Overtime. So thank you very much, and happy bidding to everyone out there. Good night. Take care.